atop a throne of skulls. All right, guys, the time is now for our Sunday stream, and today we're going to be doing King of the Hill. So I think this is actually the first time we've done it. Yeah, I don't think we've done a King of the Hill tournament. We, we did a small one, I think, back in the day with uh, Gobble King and Jonathan, but I don't even know if that was on stream. That might have been off. But yes, that was the Doom soundtrack that is going to be our trailer, and I have to get the army blocker who's going to be Chuck Norris throwing a mean kick. So I'll be playing in today's uh, tournament. Uh, I don't know how it's going to go because there's like seven or eight competitors, so... Um, let me see. So we got Arissa Damos, we got Dob Plays, Boyka Zero, Pippington, Sarmatian, and King of the Dead. Definitely quite a run of players here. It's definitely going to be fun. Game one is going to be my Norska against, uh, against Arissa Damos, who is uh, as Palpatine today. I got to go ahead and switch my army up here. Right, well, let's see. What do I want to play? I have a couple builds against vampire counts. Probably don't want to use the Mammoth. That's more of the Mimi build. But uh, yeah, we're going to have screen blockers here. So you guys will, you guys will get to see everything in action. Yeah. Good to see you guys. Thanks for joining. It's going to be quite a bit of fun. So essentially, it's going to be King of the Hill. Uh, you know, so whoever loses is going to step out. The winner stays. The winner is going to be picking the map and the faction. And then the challenger gets to pick their own faction. So it makes it a little bit, a little bit tougher for the person that's going to be the king on the hill. So yeah, it should be quite a bit of fun. It's not a party without Chuck Norris. Absolutely not. So yeah, game one, it's going to be me versus Urissa uh, Demos. I'm going to be playing Norska, and he's playing Vampire Counts. And we are on the Altor of Outskirts, which is definitely one of the better maps. So let's do it to it. I just woke up like 20 minutes ago. It's time. It's go time. We're going to see how it goes. Have some fun, hopefully. Oh, oh yeah. I'm hyped. Uh, the stream is going to go for about an hour and a half to two hours. And the person who has the most uh, wins at that point is going to be the champion for the day. Yeah, well, hopefully I I like I'm not expecting to win too many games here. I mean, I could maybe go like super try hard, but again, I'm I'm like playing yeah, I don't think I'm going to win a lot. So hopefully I'll only have to play like two or three games in today's uh, King of the Hill. 
that's kind of the reason like I'm like, okay, this is going to be a fun format. I could actually participate because I most likely won't have to play too many since whenever a player comes in to challenge the king, they then get to play a, a counter pick, right? You get to counter pick that player. So hopefully even if I win this game, the next one will be a little bit tougher. So uh, it's about 1.30 p.m. here in California. My hair is on point. Thank you, Valnir. Uh, I didn't do anything to it. I just woke up, rolled out of bed, got ready to stream. Feeling a lot better, though. Last night I was a little bit under the weather. Past few days, actually. But uh, I was able to kind of get my voice back, and I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah. It's time. Chuck Turin. Oh. I thought you were calling me Chuck Turin. I was like, now, now that I'm playing, I'm kind of like forgetting about the army blocker, right? So we'll get his boot out of here. Should be good. Don't worry, guys. Don't worry. Gonna be quite a bit of fun. So far, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Scoreboard's looking good. In before everybody loses on purpose to make me play. Don't do that, please. Hey, take care, Zach. Enjoy your dinner. Yeah. No, this is just... I just woke up like this. Yeah. We've got the green screen back there. I think Anna's sleeping back behind it. I'm not sure. She might be. She might have left. I don't know. We, we're both like a little under the weather, so we're, we're trying to, you know, get, get some heavy sleep. Jason Denny, thank you so much for the uh, donation, man. Really appreciate it. Coming in with the erect $49.99. I love like the 99 cents thing. It just reminds me of like the, the salesman, like $49.99, you get yourself a nice. Yeah, thank you so much. Here we go, indeed. As long as Arisa Damos comes in here. Bring on the spicy meme. Uh, he should be here. Yeah. Why did that echo? That actually like sounded like it was echoing. Do I have two of him in here? Did he just echo for you guys or was that just me? Yeah, I only see one Streamlabs profile in, in the, the settings. Let me know if, if Ainsley was echoing or if that was just me. I heard like a bit of a, like it sounded like there was two of them talking. Can't wait for a thousand dollar donation. Yeah, neither can I. I would be full chub. Okay, so as far as the army goes, we have a couple champs. We've got some Berserkers, so it's going to be a combination of AP, but really it's a it's a relatively high and tight build. Um, we just kind of like grind in with our infantry, and from there we, uh, you know, use the Femir to club the big things, like the, uh, not Soros, I was about to say Soros, Terror Guys and things like that. So it'll be quite a bit of fun. Um, it's a pretty tried and true build. The only thing I probably should have changed is the uh, to get Shadow Magic. I think that's just quite a bit better. Uh, we have the two Javelins in the back who are just going to be kind of sitting, having a good old time. Get those two guys, and... Uh, I mean, I feel like it has answers for most things. Again, a lot of it's going to come down to how well I play. Certainly haven't been playing too well lately, but, you know, we're going to try our best here. I uh, definitely want to make sure to put the Javelins not in skirmish mode here. Yeah, Echo, huh? The chat echoes as well. Am I echoing? Okay, let me see here. Let me take a look. Testing, testing. Oh, sorry about that. Happen. Okay. I'm trying to see what else could possibly be causing the echo. You preferred it with echo? Am I echoing though? Is my voice echoing? Let me know. Okay, as long as I okay, as long as I'm good, then we're we're fine. It's just Ainsley Ainsley can do his thing here. Just want to make sure you guys see everything as I get everything set up. All right, here we go. Show time. So double terror guys, or single terror guys, as not as expected. Yeah, it's a little bit different. It's fine. So we're gonna march forward here. I could just take the fight in open field. Um, actually, let's see if we can kind of rotate over here. Fireball is pretty good against Mortis Engine, but I didn't bring it. But he doesn't even have one, so I'm not too concerned. He does have a Master Necromancer uh, up in the sky here. Yeah, it looks like he's got standard spells, Gaze into Gash, Invocation, and Raise Dead. So we're gonna kind of put posture and try and get a decent little high ground position, which would be pretty good and tasty. He actually has Cryptors, but we got Spears and we got Throg. I feel like we'll be okay. Cryptors will be pretty decent against our front line, against the champions, but Berserkers can chop them down relatively quickly. Oh, he has one Terror Geist. Uh, the Mammoth build probably wouldn't have worked too well here, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think it would have worked too well. So he's kind of just squaring up right now. I could uh, could start throwing some spears at him here. Let's go. Let's go ahead and see if we can get some freebies. No, he's not gonna. Not gonna give it up for free. Uh, but this is fine because we're getting uh, extra wins of magic here. So we'll have enough uh, to cast some decent fire spells in the front line. Looks like it's all Grave Guard. So the standard variant. Flaming Sword of Ruin is going to be our friend this game, for sure. Um, as far as positioning goes, Terror Guys is coming in on the flank, it looks like, the Dire Pack. Yeah, so he's got he's got a, a little bit of pressure. So I want to advance, but I really don't like the positioning of this particular area. But I think we I think we just got to roll for it, because I, you know, I don't want to sit and kind of camp a little bit. So 
Go ahead and move forward. Um, Hounds are going to be pressuring the back. Looks like the Terror Guy Shriek is going to be coming in as well. So these are all Grave Guard here, which is going to be pretty strong. We'll form a bit of a flank denial as we just kind of charge in our main formation here. So these guys can go here, these guys can go here, and these guys can go here and chop down those guys. So the two big boys we'll put in group two for now. Uh, for now. And let's go ahead and scoot these guys up against the Cryptors and Cryptors. Actually, we can we can even go after the uh, the Corpse Guard there. I think that's going to be a pretty, pretty decent choice. Uh, Fremir Warriors are going to get in there and uh, yeah. Now let's go ahead and poke these guys and poke these guys. Great, so all the fighting's underway. Just got to make sure to like protect everything. Uh, these from here can go ahead and slam in there and start working on some of these cryptors. That should be okay. Throg, we're going to keep back here just to watch the Terror Geist, and we'll pop the Flaming Sword of Ruin in the front line, which hopefully will be pretty solid. And let's get these guys on the cryptors, which is going to be good. Spears moving up. All's going well in the land, I would say. He does land in the back with some uh, fell bats, which is not a problem. We can usually clean those guys up pretty quick. And the spear should be able to clean up these ones. So let's get these guys going here. And you guys keep throwing at these uh, these big boys here. Great. These from here will pull back. We'll just keep going. Looks like we're getting some decent grinding. Throg can go. I don't think he's landed his terror guys yet. He's being pretty conservative with that, actually. So we could get a burning skull down the formation, which could be pretty good. So let's go ahead and do that, just like so. Looks like it might have been a bit of a miss here. But the javelins are still thrown in. We're taking out the cryptors, which I'm happy about. And it is going to be a bit of a war of attrition. So he might go after Throg. With the, uh, with the Terror Guys, I'm not 100% sure. Let's get these Spears in here helping out as well. And it looks like he's going to be landing on the flank. The Burning Skull did okay damage. Nothing to write home about, but yeah, we are burning down those Cryptors pretty darn quick right here. So Throg, let's get you back in there. Um, you can go start working on some of those guys and pop fight or die as well. Okay, great. So it looks like our back line's relatively secure. The Terror Guys has landed, so we're going to pull back these Femir real quick, get them uh, kind of repositioned. And Throg is uh, doing a pretty good job, man. Let's get the fight or die. We force back the Cryptors, which is good. Let's get those Spears kind of continuing to pepper those guys. We just have to like really, really be conservative with protecting our formation. Just make sure we're keeping it, you know, keeping it pretty tight here. And the Fear, yeah, they're all in really good shape. I mean, I would say the fight's going pretty well. Yeah, certainly not going badly. Spears are defending against uh, against all these threats. Skeleton warriors mostly coming in. He's getting some good zombie summons though, for sure. All right, Throg Daddy's in a little bit of a bad position. So let's go ahead and get these javelins. We'll start throwing here. Throg can start working. And uh, let's get these spears pulled back. Do we have any Femir warriors nearby? We have a couple. Okay, so they can kind of pull back here. It looks like they're getting targeted a little bit, which is fine. How's Throg doing? Throg should be able to win that engagement. The Berserkers there are also uh, attacking. So far, so good. Let's go ahead and get our, our, Femir, uh, our Femir Bale Fiend in there. Get these guys going, and these spears can go ahead. His other spears basically broke off, and we get these uh, from here back as well, which is going to be really nice. So let's get them grinding in there, potentially doing their thing. We can push these guys up to the front line. And Throg is not doing too good against that uh, Balefiend, actually. So let's give him the Cascading Park. Let's see if that'll help out. We still do have one group of Javelins online as well. So let's see if we can pull them back through the spears. Get those from here kind of piling back in. And the, yeah, it's a close fight, for sure. How are we doing? How are we doing on the bounce? I feel like we got to pull Throg back. He's just not faring well versus that Terror, guys. So he needs to waddle back right now. He does have regeneration, which is going to be really good. So let's get the Berserkers and everyone kind of piling in this direction. Maybe we can chop up some of those Hounds over there. And the uh, Femir Warriors, let's pull them in. Play a little bit defensively. We are getting those Spears. Yeah, his, his ground forces are getting a little bit tattered, for sure. Pile you guys in. And the Spears, we can kind of just keep back to fight the Hounds, which is going to be fine. Okay, great. So now we can go, actually go ahead and maybe finish off this Corpse Guard. We do have another Burning Skull, but it's not really going to be worth it here, I don't think. Yeah, there's, I mean, I think we just save for the, the flamings, flaming sword of ruin. Okay, so these guys are piling in. We are getting the uh, the corpse cart down relatively quick, which is going to be super solid. We can just start working on the terror guys. I don't think the terror guys will be able to deal with Throg and a Femir Bale Fiend later on. How are we doing on the the uh, the, uh, the Femir Warriors? Yeah, they're a little bit compromised right now, for sure. But we really are, are grinding out the infantry fight pretty well, I would say. Okay, so he's charging back here. Let's go ahead and pull the spears forward at this point. Yeah, and I think the Femir, we just got to keep fighting with them. Just let's actually keep them back a little bit defensively. I don't think we need them in this pocket right now. Although they are really smashing those uh, those warriors. All right, Throg and the Caster. Most of the Cryptors are down. We are ahead on the Bounce of Power for the first time. And it looks like the Vampire Count's army is starting to crumble for sure. All right, so he's going after the Caster, which is fine. We can actually turn and fight in a 2v1. Give Cascading Fire Cloak to Throg to make him a little bit tankier. And these Femir can go ahead and pile in. And uh, they can just club Skeleton Warriors. Let's move these guys forward. We have a lot of, like, scary, powerful troops left. And yeah, you see, Throg is actually laying a whooping on this Terror Guys now. Why is Cascading Fire Cloak not going now? Let's get that cast. Good. So good and tasty. But yeah, our uh, Norskin Berserkers have the Enrage mechanic. The Femir kind of... We're playing a little bit conservatively with them, but... I like this build quite a bit against Vampire Counts. I think it is kind of a, it's a fun matchup. I don't know who has the advantage, but I feel like it's it's relatively even. 
Okay. Maybe I have to play a little bit more to kind of gauge that, but the Flaming Sword here is going to hurt pretty bad if we get it off, but for some reason... Did it go off? Yeah, it did. Yeah, that's it. GG. Palpatine, Palpatine Necromancer will never land. Oh my god. No, I wanted to lose that game so I wouldn't have to play more. Oh. <laughs> GG. GG. Yeah, that was a fun one, for sure. So, Big Papa T coming up with... Uh, I'm, I'm winning this this King of the Hill. 1-0. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, we just gotta kill the zombies now. A little bit under the weather, guys, so my apologies if my voice gives out. We'll save that replay. Let's call it replay. How's that sound? Yeah, that, that build's pretty good. I mean, you could really grind out their front line, and we had the javelins to really do work on the crypt tours. That was really, really clutch for sure. Um, yeah. So my next faction is going to be Beastmen. And now we got to get who's next. And uh... next, next is going to be Dob Plays, I think. He'll be back, I'm sure. Feels rigged, right? Feels feels rigged. Hey, what's up? Welcome, guys. We will see. We will see, Sarmation. That is that is the great mystery of the day. <laughs> I'm fighting for that for that pocket money. So yeah, we got to just grab Dov now. Um, and as far as the map goes, so how we're gonna do it is the uh, the current king of the hill is gonna pick the. Uh, oh, and I gotta update the scoreboard too. So let's go ahead and do that. And red player name. Uh, is going to be next. Hopefully he's, he's not AFK. No, Dov hasn't paid yet. He hasn't. Uh, the map will pick the, uh, we'll pay, pick like Pillar of Bone or something. I think that's a pretty, it's around here somewhere. Cool. All right. Let me go ahead and find the glorious Dov. See if he's lurking in the shadows. If he's not, we can always skip ahead. Um, let me go ahead and see. Yeah, guys, so we're just going to be starting starting the next battle here in a moment. That was the first one of the day. Hey, uh, heart sick Ruben. Well, I'm sorry you're heart sick, firstly. And secondly, I'm glad you're enjoying the channel. Yeah, we're, we, try, we try and have some fun here on the weekends. We do our streams and everything. And Cygors? Well, maybe we'll get Cygors. The thing is, is my opponent gets to counterpick me, so... Yeah, we'll see. Back in here. Yes. How's it going, guys? Welcome. And for anyone watching after the fact, um, I will be like putting up the uh, the matchups and everything, or the timestamps, so you guys will be able to see everything as it progresses. We go ahead and message Dov. I'll see if he's if see if he's around. He said he was in, he wanted to play. So Let's see here. Oh, the stream's only been up for like uh, like twenty or thirty minutes. It's it's a relatively new so. Let's see. Yeah, we just had one game. It was the uh, it was Norska versus uh, Vampire Counts for the first game. So I played Norska. Davud and Dov stole your name. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Goodness gracious. Hey, what's up, guys? What's up? What's up? But we might have a replacement here, so we'll find out. Um, Oh, 
I think we have a surprise challenger today, guys. We have uh, the Gobble King might be joining us. He, I just saw he wants to play. <laughs> We've added Gobbo to the list of contenders. One second. One second here, and then we will. Yeah, I know. He's going to make an appearance. It's going to be fun. It's going to be showtime. It says it's full. Oh, we got Boyka. Never mind. Okay, we got it. Okay, one second. Let's go ahead and update the scoreboard so it says Boyka. All right. Cabo says he lost. He lost a quick battle just to join them. You're good. Let's play. So uh, we are playing Beastmen versus Bretonia, which is definitely a pretty fun matchup. So just in case, I'll put on the screen blocker. You never know. Army blocker. We got Chuck Norris throwing a straight kick. So we have options. I think we're going to go with some cows, some beast people. And um, yeah, let's have, let's have some fun. It's going to be good. This is a matchup I, I really do enjoy quite a bit. It's, it's, a, it's a really a fun one. Get a little bit of this, a little bit of this. Oh, don't forget a caster. I feel like casters are pretty important here in this matchup. Or in any matchup in general. Casual tournament, casual hair, baby. Yeah, I like that. That could be like a slogan or something. Oh, uh, let's get this guy. Oh man, you guys, you guys are gonna look you're gonna like the way I look, you guarantee I guarantee it. Okay. Alright. This build is pretty Pretty Mimi, I would say. Ah, oh, no, it needs more. That's too janky. I can't do that. Okay, I can't do that. Sorry, guys. I have to. I actually have to try today. I have to try and put on a decent show at least. Get one of these guys. We will get some Ungor spears, and I'm ready. Whenever he's ready, we shall go. And it's showtime. Oh, and he switched to lizard men. Oh, okay. That changes things. Oh man, good thing I looked. I was like minimized, like resetting the scoreboard and everything. Like all the, oh man, okay. That could have been really bad. Although honestly, my build, it wouldn't be too different um, against the lizards. Maybe not Lore of Shadows. Lore of Shadows isn't bad against dinos. We could get like, Well, that definitely changes my flank situation. I don't really need that too much. Yeah, I feel like this is okay. This isn't bad. I think we can make this work. Cool. No time. No, Boyka is not Gabo. Boyka is his own person. Magic Arena is really fun. I actually enjoy it quite a bit. No, Gabo's going to be jumping in a little later. He is in the pool, though. 
perhaps if Gobbo King or King of the Dead, if you could actually uh, maybe drop the list in chat, the list of players, that'd be pretty helpful. All right, so let me go ahead and get rid of Chuck Norris with the straight kick. And, uh, fucker. Come on, I need one of these guys to just slay me so I don't have to play. My hand can rest and I can just commentate games. Although I have this new thing that I've been doing, actually. Um, so I bought, like, something called a paraffin wax bath. So it's like a like a heating tub, essentially. And what it does is it heats, uh, like, wax, right, to, like, a really hot temperature to the point where it, like, conforms around your hand and then it dries. And I put my hands in there and it, like... Uh, it like warms up the hands really well. It feels great with my tendonitis, so it's been helping quite a bit lately. We got the Korox Manor Prison in the back, of course. Always pretty good. We got uh, we got some some beast people. Yeah. So um, so yeah, we got some throwing axes, which are pretty much a staple. The reason why we bring the uh, the raiders is actually to take down uh, the flying the flying pests, the uh, the skinks. So. We'll put some up here and we'll get group four here. These guys are just a rear charge and like basically keep the skinks honest. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna keep these guys up just like this and that should be okay. Gobble King isn't in yet. Yeah, he's not in yet. He's playing a little later today. Uh, I think he's like after the next couple games here. Alright, so we were having people kind of trickle in, so we had to like keep changing up the list there at the last second. Oh, I did not mean to do that. It's just instinct. Okay, he said he's ready. Okay, good, good. I don't feel so bad. Okay, so throwing axes, we got some uh, we got some laser dinos, which is going to be pretty cool. And let's get these guys around back. I'm not seeing any skinks, so... Does he have a caster? Hopefully he has a caster somewhere. Okay, yes, maybe he forgot a wizard. Who knows? We'll find out in a second. Anyways, we're just going to kind of march over here. See what's going on. He's got spears. He's got, yeah. He's got some little skink bastards. So if we can flush them out of the front, uh, get them kind of. Yeah, we need to take these guys off the uh, the manual skirmish mode, which is a really, really kind of a trollish thing here. We're gonna try and push the skinks past the Saurus front line, and then from there, hopefully, we can uh, we can do some work. So get you guys going here. Let's get you guys going here. We'll get the raiders. You guys can start taking pot shots at them. And Korox Manor first follow up. And these guys go here. Great. So we're getting a decent little surround here. We get a lot of throwing axes coming on those guys. And yeah, there's. Some decent value for sure. Uh, the Raiders aren't going to be best suited shooting against uh, Chameleons though, so let's actually do a bit of a cross engagement here. I think that should be okay. Yeah, that'll be good. And okay, if he's going to leave that guy alone, I don't mind charging and taking those freebies. And the throwing axes, uh, we can go ahead and keep these two kind of throwing. This guy can go up around here. It looks like in the back he does have some uh, some swords. Yeah, so he's got some some dinos. So let's pull back these guys right now. It's a little bit dangerous to uh, kind of have them in there. We're definitely going to be in pretty good shape here on the front line. So let's go ahead and drop a pendulum. Right down there, and uh, yeah, we get a decent little surround, so we'll pull back right now. Now, the throwing axes, let's go ahead and pull them across, and have you guys just shoot at the big dinos, and the Korok's Manor Purs need to scoot up as well. And we could summon some Chaos Spawn here, but I think we're going to kind of hold off for now. We need to get back to those skinks for sure, so we're going to pull all those those gores in there and everything. We need to get our uh, our throwing axes away from away from those guys, like, just hardcore. He's getting in there, though. Let's go ahead and summon the Chaos Spawn. I think we need to commit to this, like, center fight a little bit. And let's go ahead and cast the Enfeebling Foe on Krokar. It's going to definitely make him quite a bit weaker. And we'll pull in the Centigors potentially to get some, uh, yeah, we'll get a little surround here. So the Throwing Axes, we're going to come over here and see. And let's also pour in and see if we can take out Krokar here. He does terrify our caster, which is a little bit tough for sure. Can't really squeeze through here too well. But we can do some rear charging, I guess. He's doing a pretty good job with his spears, kind of keeping those guys in position. So let's get you guys right there. Let's get the Hounds over and up and under like this. Yeah, and Krokar's getting danger low, for sure. Keep these. Uh, let's pull you guys back right now. Let's go ahead and collapse over on this formation. Bounce power is pretty even, I would say. Nothing uh, nothing terribly devastating for either player. Now let's get this guy. They can go attack here. And the Hounds, like I said, can just kind of pull under. We have throwing axes there. And we could get another Pendulum. I don't really know if we need to, per se. Now the Raiders just kind of keep turning and shooting. And the Gores can, they can actually just run up and around. It's going to be a little bit better. So, yeah, we definitely want to just take out the uh, Bastillodons to the best of our abilities. Okay. So, yeah, we're going here. The uh, Korok's Manor Purse can go ahead and fight for now because we're going to have a ton of pressure coming on these uh, these little skinks here in a moment as soon as we can get around. It's kind of like a bit of a dance, right? Like rotating all our troops. So, yeah, we, we were able to crack that, uh, that Bastillodon right there with the Solar Engine. And these guys are going to collapse on the skinks, which I think once I get on these skinks here, it's pretty much going to be game blouses. I don't think he'll be able to do anything. A little bit sloppy. I'm um, letting my caster there go down like that. Um, 
I wasn't paying too much attention to him. Now we can get the throwing axes and go after Krokar, which would be fine. So let's actually split them up so they don't obstruct one another. Okay, so we do get on this ganks with uh, with our Centigors. Korok's Manor first can keep chasing these guys. And do we have any beasts kind of not doing anything? We do, so how convenient. Get you guys going after that Bastilodon. Great, so now we have some good focus fire here, for sure. We're just going to be piling onto these guys. Definitely doing a lot of work. So these Chaos spawn a little bit... A little bit... Yeah, not not the most useful here. So let's actually get them to go break this, uh, this guy back here. So uh, throwing axes, we're going to pull back. Hopefully we can finish this guy off. We'll find out. Rox Manor Purse are tearing those guys up. Hounds are kind of chewing on the chameleons. So far, so good. Losing the caster like that, though, that was really, really sloppy, however that happened. I, I don't actually didn't even like see what happened there. So yeah, we'll just kind of keep chewing. Hopefully we can finish off those Saurus. And these uh, these throwing axes, we can just charge into those chameleons for now. Potentially uh, finish those guys off. Got a pretty good pocket here. And the Manor Rippers are going to be tough for our opponent to handle. So let's get these guys running back as well. And uh, yeah, we can just turn and fight Croc R here. Not a problem. I'd like to break off all these skinks. That would be really good if we can kind of like smash in there and finish those guys. But actually, let's pull let's pull up and through here. See if we can go get Croc Daddy himself. Uh, the raiders can just shoot these spears for now. Croc's Manor Rippers, unfortunately, are fighting like Saurus, which isn't like the best use of those guys. So let's keep fighting, and it looks like we were able to break that off. So let's get these Chaos Spawn back and have them charge in here, and let's get the throwing axes kind of running over here as well. So the skinks are pretty much de dealt with for the most part. Which is uh, very, very solid for us. We're going to pull the throwing axes back. Just kind of keep working on Cousin Croc. And uh, yeah, we can kind of keep chasing down whatever skinks come back. Just got to make sure to stay away from Croc R. That's what's going to be uh, pretty important here for sure. I actually don't have any like supporting elements here, really. Yeah. So let's just kind of keep kiting. We'll throw here. We're in okay shape. We are in okay shape. I think we got this. Because the Korok's Man are going to be pretty tough for my opponent to finish. Oh, we have some poison hounds, so we can actually pull those guys back, see if we can stabilize our back line a little bit. Pull these guys back here. Chaos spawn are fighting. And oh, oh good, we got some centigors back, so they can go tie that guy down. These guys can keep throwing here. Let's actually put them in skirmish mode, just so we don't have to like manage them too much. Yeah, we'll just kind of keep poking them. And the man rippers, we need to get over here ASAP. And we can just use centigors to kind of clean up the scraps, which is going to be fine. Those raiders can come here. Let's get a little crossfire there, see if we can polish those guys off. Um, Croc might actually just go after our Lord, which probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Manifers need to get over here, though. Need to, they need to start doing their, doing their duty. Yes. Yeah, I don't know why he wouldn't bring a caster. It might have been a mistake, I think. I honestly think it was a mistake, but it's okay. It was still a good game, regardless. It was pretty fun. Uh, so we'll get those guys piling in, and yeah. At this point, I don't think there's anything he can do, because we can just kind of, uh... He can just hunt down the last of his dinosaurs. Get those guys back. And uh, yeah, we just hunt down the big dino here. The big the big kahuna himself. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys. All the likes and uh, everything helps out. And also big thanks to Jason Denny for uh, the donation earlier. Really appreciate it, my, my dude. We do break off Croc. That's good. So now we just chase them off with our dinosaurs, honestly. And we can get the man rippers and everyone else going after the Basilodon. And uh, yeah, this guy can just keep running here. It's fine. There we go. We did it. We did it. So, so far, 2-0 here. Climbing our way through the king of the hill. Uh, let's go ahead and see who's next. Oh, why did it do that? That was kind of weird. Like when I just hit the escape button, it like, uh, it kicks me out. So, okay, so join. Okay, I just need to remake it. Maybe it, uh... Oh, you guys, you guys can see the password now. It's okay. Not a big deal. Gotta close the spectator slots. And next we have... We got zero. Uh, so I get to play my faction here. So my faction is going to be Tomb Kings. Let's see what he plays. Are you zero? <laughs> I have to make sure. I have to make sure, because people coming in with names. Okay. I know, I actually didn't want to play more than like one or two games. Okay. Next we have the challenger is going to be zero. That's his actual name, I think, that he usually plays under, so we'll just put zero for now. 
But the thing is about the person coming in, they get to counter pick you. So he can play Wood Elves, for example, and I get to pick the maps too. So for the map, I will play... Let's just do something ridiculous. Yeah, we'll do Troll Country. Troll Country is a really solid map. I like it quite a bit. Uh, will Terran do a, a naked squat for his 50,000 subs? Hey, Ryan Clark. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. Tomb Kings are actually one of my best factions, actually. They're, I, I think they're... Ooh, I love this matchup. This is a fun one. Chaos vs. Uh, Tomb Kings is really fun. I'm surprised you're not counterpicking me harder, though. I feel like that's not like the worst counterpick. We got a couple donations as well on PayPal that I did not see. So let me go ahead and shout those out real quick. Uh, big thanks to uh, Espen for the $10 donation and Connor for the 10 pounds. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it, my dudes. Okay, so we, we better get we better get Chuck Norris uh, blocking the screen here. Feeling better though. Yeah, my voice actually feels good today. So I'm kind of happy about this, uh, this, this change here. Okay, so of course we're gonna go with Big Papa Arkin. How can we not? Arkin is just so good and tasty. Uh, go with one of these guys. Is there now, God? No. Oh yeah. Oh good. Gojira and I get to play our Blood Bowl match. We'll probably play it uh, in the next couple days. That should be quite a bit of fun. Okay. This is going to be an interesting one. Um, how do we want to play this? There's so many different ways you can play this matchup. It's, this is like such a... I mean, do I want Skarmishers? Oh, choices, choices. I'm really excited for the uh, DLC. I'm really excited. Some Dragon Ogres? Yeah, there'll probably be some Dragon Ogres for sure. I don't mind Dragon Ogres, though. <laughs> I welcomed him with open arms. Uh, probably should do a little something like this. I mean, there's so many different ways you can play this matchup, to be honest. I think we're gonna try something fun. I did just wake up like like 45 minutes ago. We're gonna try something a little meme -y. Best case, it works out. Worst case, we don't have to play. We get to take a rest. I'm gonna try my hardest though, don't worry guys. Like that, I'm, I'm never one of those people who's gonna be like, I'm not gonna try. Like I'm gonna try. I'm gonna give it my all here. Um. Okay. We can cut one of those, maybe get some uh, some of this. This army is quite ridiculous. I'm a little concerned for it. But uh, yeah, let's do it. It's not like super Mimi. I think it's an okay build. But it, it has elements in it that certainly are not normal against Chaos. But I think it's also going to make for a fun match. So. We'll see. We'll see if the uh, the man himself can do it. <sighs> you know, sometimes bringing things that your opponents don't expect can, like, win you the games, too. Because he's going to be like, oh, Turin would never be stupid enough to bring that thing. And then all of a sudden, uh, no, uh, Shmarmstone, this is not a best of five. This is King of the Hill. So I have two wins right now, and we've been, uh, we've been rotating, so... Uh, there is a hero. We don't have double. Uh, so army blocker. Get rid of uh, the dude here. So it, it's going to be like... We have some Ushapti Great Bows because they're super good against Chaos. We have an Iro Titan because that's the meme. The Iro Titan is the unit that I don't think is terribly... A Sphinx would have been better probably, but... I like to party, you know? I like to party. <laughs> We're going to have some fun. And we got Halberds in the front line just because they hold and at least they have some AP, so they can, like, you know, do a little bit of lifting. He's probably just going to spam, like, Chosen and stuff. Um, we have Arkin plus uh, a Caster here. We have a couple Carrion to chase down uh, Throwing Axes. And then we have uh, one Nehekar Horseman just to give us some battlefield control and stuff like that. Yeah. 
I got the screen blocker. The Titan, baby. The Titan's coming out to play. He's going He's going to be going dick deep. Look at this guy. You think he's someone who does just the tip? I don't think so. He's got that spirit leech. We got that Arkin. It's time, brothers. It's time. Yeah, the Titan's coming. Undead Kaiju. I think it's an okay build. It's it's a little weird. Should probably put this guy actually. I'm gonna regroup these guys. Here. You and three, four, and five. I mean, I feel like we, we have okay stuff. Carrion are, are good at chasing down throwing axes, which are good against constructs, so. He's ready. Let's see what the moose has got. Oh, okay, he's got a lot of stuff. But it is not a problem. We can start shooting them with our Shopty Great Bows. Uh, the front line looks to just be kind of chaffy stuff. Does he have throwing axes? Oh, he does have throwing axes. Okay, so we want to be focusing throwing axes down. And five, and uh, let's get you guys kind of trolling a little bit. So the uh, Shopty Great Bow is definitely going to do some work. Um, so let's get you guys kind of piling out here. As far as like his actual units, he has Kolek. He's got a Shagath, which is fine. We're getting a lot of damage on those guys, though. Yeah, this is great. Okay, so let's go ahead and start doing a... Ooh, 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 don't let us get you. Don't let us get you. We're coming. One, two. Oh, so we got to start shooting Kolek now. We can't play any more games. Yeah, we can't play any more games. That's going to be really nice. Great. So here we... What we're going to do is we're just going to kind of, uh, you know, bring Big Papa Kolek in here. And uh, we'll actually summon some skeletons here. So the point of that is to actually to uh, stop the frontline charge. So we're going to cast a Spirit Leech with our Titan. And hopefully that does some pretty good work. Um, he's dropping a little uh, little Thunderbolt action on us, which is cool. Here we did catch his uh, his throwing axes for the most part, but yeah, we need to we need to be careful here. So these guys can just engage. We'll form a bit of a flank denial. Titan can march in as well. And we're gonna drop a little bit of little bit of this hotness here. We go here. We get the tomb prince going as well. You can drop that tomb strike. And yeah, Arkin, you need to be careful, buddy. There is there are big scary things in this world. Are big scary monsters. Okay, so we've disrupted his his backline situation a little bit. I mean, the throwing axes have been on offline for quite some time here. So let's go ahead, get our guys, the Titan and company. Let's see if we can kind of smash in here and do some work. Um, these two Shopty Grapos, we're going to kind of park over here and form like a bit of a new formation. And yeah, the anti-large on this guy is really helping out quite a bit, actually. Yeah, so let's see if we can get this guy down. That'd be really good. We do have a Fate of Buna, but I don't think it's like worth it right now. I uh, will form the spears. Let's get you guys kind of running back. Chosen of the gods. You shop the, the bows can come in here. Come on, get back, get back. So we're going to switch over to collect now. Get these guys going in here. Shop the great bows can kind of uh, just park behind our spears for now. And the titan. Yeah, great bows are in okay shape. Let's start shooting collect. We could get a shams burning gaze on him too. Let's do that. It's going to be fun. Uh, spears can pull back. We have our defenders here. Let's go ahead and pull in. Our front line is going to like get killed eventually, which kind of is like one of the big issues we're going to be facing. Oh, we're going to get a charge here. This is going to be good. We do have the Fate of Buna. So these are just Chaos Marauders, so we can actually send our Spears back there to deal with those guys. Kolek's getting very, like, very, very low, though, which is nice. Okay, so this is good. So let's go ahead and just pull over here, see if we can do some damage to the Chariots. Keep our Rishopti going in. And the Titan's in okay shape. He's kind of just doing his thing, but let's actually pull him back here. So Kolek wants to fight. He wants to go Fisticuffs, which is fine. We got that sweet Spirit Leech. We're going to go. We have some Spears helping out as well. Yeah, and we have the Ushapti summon, so I think we're going to use that to kind of uh, secure our back line. And uh, keep the bows in group 4, just kind of shooting here. Man, he's laying a whooping on my uh, my Tomb Boy. Yeah, I think it's worth trading, though, with Kolek. And he he has a couple uh, throwing axes back there I think he's partially forgotten about, which is fine. So, uh, Lira Mortis is going to get dropped right now. Arkin's going to pull back, and the Ushapti Great Bows can just finish off Kolek from here. Uh, these summon Ushapti can kill these Chaos Marauders, hopefully. And the Titan, uh, yeah, you can start working on these Chariots, that's okay. Cool. So the Shagas are pretty low. We have a Spirit Leech to kind of polish this one off. And where can we go ahead and run our bows? Let's see if we can just kind of run them through here. Arkin might be able to finish off this Shagath. We did... We have the Spirit Leech overcast. He has 600 HP, so maybe we overcast that to make sure he breaks? Let's actually just kind of see for a second and see what ends up happening. So the Titans... Okay, it's kind of just meandering about. Okay, so Kolek's gone. Now we can safely use the Spirit Leeches here. We're saving the... Uh, what's it called? The, the true debuffs here, and good. So we got free. We can start shooting now. We have these Summon Shopti, which are doing a really good job against the Chaos Warriors and stuff. Arkin's in a bit of a bad place here. Oh, he's going to get recharged by that caster, which is going to suck, but this guy's wavering. If we can just break him... Okay, yeah, that's good. And we're going to get a Skeleton Summon right now, too, which is going to be huge. That'll help. 
Okay, so this guy's broken, so let's go ahead and spirit leech him as well. We have the, uh, move the back line. Looks like he's getting a little bit crunk, but we got some spears back there. And now we can just start shooting. I think, I think Arkin can actually outduel this guy, probably. Let's get the Titan back here. He's kind of just been, like, waddling around the battlefield. I don't really know what he's doing. He's just stomping Chaos Warriors randomly. Uh, yeah, I think we gotta run. I don't think we can play this game right now. So, the Summon Shopti, let's go ahead and pull them over here. Let's pull Arkin through. And the Titan needs to just kind of come join the uh, the party in the back line. Skeleton Warriors can go ahead and jump here. Just take out that caster for now. Halberds actually are, are doing really well for us. I'm quite happy with their performance. It's going to be hard for him to kill the Titan for sure. So I think what we do is we actually just kill the uh, throwing axes right now. And if we can kill the throwing axes, uh, yeah, I don't think we need to worry about that. And somebody shop to can chase those guys off. Titan's in pretty good shape here. Yeah, that's the whole point. I just wanted to kill the Shagus so the Titan could be basically unstoppable. I mean, he's he's pretty pretty alpha here for sure. Then shoot uh, Shem's Burning Gaze there. And yeah. Okay, those throwing axes are offline. Let's go ahead and kill these horsemen. Arkin's just going to sit here and cackle. Uh, we do have spirit leeches, so let's go ahead and drop those on those guys. And uh, let's go. And boom, another nice little spirit leech, which is solid. He can keep doing his thing. We can actually attack the chariots here. Um... Yuzu Shopti, we can actually charge in and hit the Chariots if they want to play that game. Yeah, we can actually just shoot those guys down. They can't really do much against us, so I feel like it's a waste of ammunition. Skeleton Spears, pull back. I mean, the Bounce Power is pretty even, but I don't think he has anything to kill the uh, Shopti here. So we're going to go ahead and drop the Lever Mortis just to help out. And we need to get Arkin back. Titan, you need to... T I think the Titan needs to stand over here. Yeah. Okay, so let's get you guys uh, charging in to cover. So we're going to charge in the Shopti because they have high mass. And they should be able to... Oh, they didn't stop the one guy we wanted to stop here. Yeah, we might have to, like, loop around. It's like we're stuck, kind of. Okay, whatever. We're just going to fight. And uh, hopefully we can get the Titan in there. We have a Spirit Leech coming in, which is going to be good. And the Ushapti coming back. I wish I had a Skeleton Summon. That would be really good. But the Titan's about to get here. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. This was a little bit risky. Maybe I should have ran here. But I think the Titan should be able to polish those guys off. Get those guys running. And we actually have the Nehekar Horseman, who I've forgotten about, actually. Um, we do break the caster, but Arkin looks like he's going to crumble here. Maybe he can squeak away and stabilize. I don't know. Come on, Arkin. Get out of there. 100 HP. Ugh. Okay, he's, he's going to have to fight. You Shopti, we're just going to kind of uh, run back right now. And actually, we can use the Nehekar Horseman to protect them, which will be pretty good. And we're just going to let the Titan stand and fight, just Kaiju style. Yeah, I, I, a little bit of sloppy with letting Arkin take that much damage. He really didn't need to. So these horsemen can come. We need to get these Ushapti a little bit of separation. And uh, yeah, we can just start fighting here. We can actually pop a Shem's Burning Gaze on that guy. See what we can do. So let's run you over here, you over here. And uh, we can actually start getting some, some crossfire on these guys. Ooh, this is going to be good. Let's charge on the horsemen. Hopefully we can get some terror routing here as well. We can run these guys back. Titan's still fighting, which is good. Good. Okay, we broke off those horsemen, I think. They're, it looks like they're actually wavering to the Nehekar horsemen. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to be surprised. He actually does have some throwing axes over here, so that's what's hurting our Titan, believe it or not. Um, so let's get you guys charging in. And uh, let's see if we can snipe out the caster real quick. That's going to be it's going to be pretty crucial. What are you doing, Titan? They're almost out of throwing axes. Maybe he's going to be able to endure. Hopefully these Chaos Warriors get broken as well. Yeah, our shop. I think he's going to win this. I think he's going to win this. The Titan, probably not as good as the Necro Sphinx. The Necro Sphinx is faster and could have killed the uh, the Shaggots a little quicker. Yeah, I don't know if the Iron Titan can carry, boys. We're trying. These who shopped you are trying. I mean, maybe. Maybe when he runs out of throwing axes. As long as we don't get slapped with army losses, that's really the big thing. Okay, so these Ushapti need to run. Because we need to just avoid army losses. Because the Titan still has a ton of HP. Why is he crumbling, though? Shouldn't be. He's in, like, pretty good health. My opponent's coming in with the caster. So let's kind of get some separation. Uh, start shooting at some of the Chaos Chariots. Yeah, it just sucks my whole army is crumbling. That's, that's really the biggest deterrent here, to be honest. It's like he's going to be running. I thought he was going to charge him with his caster. It's a lot of HP. Okay, leadership's kind of stabilizing. But yeah, when, as we lose these guys in the back, we then run into problems with our leadership. Yeah. We tried. 
The Titan wasn't the right pick. I, I mean, I knew it, but it's, uh, he's trying his hardest. He's trying his hardest and gotten so far. GG. I get to rest my hands. <laughs> We're here. Yeah, that was a good game. That was a really good game. I thought we might have it, but I felt like I couldn't get Big Boy where we needed him to actually do stuff because he was really just beating on Chaos Warriors the whole time, which wasn't super, super useful. That was a great replay, by the way. I need to save that one. Uh, Titan. Attack I should have called it Attack on Titan. All right, so I'm going to let him know that he needs to stay. Let me check the list to see who's next. And uh, so, okay. You stay. Pick map and faction. GG. Same. Okay, so I'm going to uh, rejoin as a spectator, so I have to make sure to have a slot open. And uh, let me go ahead and rejoin. Yeah, I could have played that a little differently. I think, though, the Necro Sphinx would have been uh, enough to probably win the game instead of the uh, the Titan. Endorsed OP. Yeah, the Burning Gazes don't always go off. Okay, so uh, currently... So let me get my notepad here. Second... I'm just like I have a I have a sheet where I'm keeping track of all the score and everything. So next up we have um, Pippington. If he's ready, I know he was working on something, but yeah, let's go ahead and do this and uh, red player. Zero, and then he has one. And then he's going to be facing off against Pip. Let me see if Pip can find. Not yet. Oh, uh, yeah. The, the stream, I think we're going to go for two hours. And whoever has the most wins at that point is going to be the winner. So. Yeah, that, those are fun games, though, for sure. Hopefully you guys got to enjoy. Yeah, now we're jumping over to the next one. Got to make sure to... Uh... Oh, we got Pippington. Never mind. We're good. And Pippington is going to be... We really put down those Shaggis, though, for sure. But again, the front line situation became pretty ugly. Great. Chaos versus Greenskins. Pretty fun matchup. Definitely a classic. I did play Norska. That was my first game of the stream. Winning three would have been good because that would have put me in a pretty solid position. Because it's hard to get three in a row, for sure. Uh, especially when your opponent gets to pick the faction against you. Hang on, I'll be right back.
give your meat, meat a good, good old rub. rub. Yeah, that's it. it. Nice, nice and hot. Hot, hot and spicy, spicy meat. meat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, boy. I return to you in your hour of need. Here to entertain. <laughs> Here to chew bubble gum and entertain, and I'm all out of bubble gum. Uh, army blocker will be. Good. So here we have a showdown between Zero, who I just played, and he's going to be facing off against Pippington and his Greenskins, which is definitely going to be quite a fun matchup here. So quite excited to see this one. And, uh, oh no, my laptop just died. So I'm going to be uh, off of chat for just a moment. I actually uh, got to get my uh, charger after this game, but don't worry, guys. We'll be, we'll be back in just a moment. Yeah, Pippington, and uh, yeah, big thanks to One Man's Way. Turin, you should invite again in Lucky Charms. He is really good and whooped me one time in Quick Battle. Well, I'll, I'll keep an eye open. For this lucky charms that you said that you speak of so professional moose deer is going to be playing chaos yet again and he was able to be counterpicked because that's how it works so the person who is going to be challenging then gets to pick the race as they come in which i definitely think that's a pretty fun format uh that was actually sarmation who mentioned that to me so uh, big thanks to you for uh, providing that information but as far as the armies go for the forces of zero he does have uh, the warp chicken always pretty good against green skins hard to lock down fear and terror uh, has pretty good spells. You can use Final Transmutation against Greenskin Lords. The Bombardment spells are also quite powerful. Very wide infantry core. He does have a combination of Chaos Marauders, Mirror Guard, and it looks like Chaos Warriors with Great Open 2, and put up an okay fight against Black Lords. He does also have Marauder Horsemen, a couple groups over here of Horse Masters, and uh, yeah, just lots of infantry and a very wide list. It looks like he's going to try and surround the Greenskins and try and deny them that straight-up fight. And guys, the Meme Lord Pippington, a very high-level player, uh, he's actually going to be using Grimgore Ironhide. So if he wins today, I think that Pippington will deserve to be the uh, the hero of the people. He gets the award. Grimgore Ironhide. He does also have Black Orcs. He's got a secondary line of Skulkers in case there's any penetration. He can use a Smoke Bomb. Three Archers, so they're going to be Orc Air Boys, Broken Tusk Mob, and Spiders in the back. Just a badass army. Just absolutely badass. He does have a Night Goblin Shaman as well with uh, Itchy Nuisance, Sneaky Stabbing, and uh, Fist of Gore. Sorry guys, I'm getting my voice back a little bit. It's been a couple days of uh, down, being down and sick a little bit. So yeah, it's definitely going to be quite a bit of fun. So looking forward to seeing how the showdown goes. I definitely think the Greenskins have a really good army here. I mean, the Black Works, I don't, I don't know. I mean, there's a couple of Chaos Warriors. Let's see how many are there in total. Looks like there's four. Okay, so he has enough AP. Plus, he has plenty of skirmishing tools with the Horse Masters. But yeah, this is a pretty good Greenskin army. It's very high and tight. Going to be defensive. He's going to march forward. He's going to grind out the battle, and he's going to defend his flanks with the, board, the boars and the force goblins. Uh, the broken tusk mob is also a very good tool to use against the uh, the big bird. So, but you know, big bird likes to run into the front line and cause problems. He can always counter charge with the broken tusk mob and cause a lot of damage. So, so it looks like there's going to be some light skirmishing. Horse master is going to be thrown in at the black orcs. They do pick off a model, which isn't bad. Over here, he's going to be throwing at the skulkers as well. It looks like he does get a single model there. Probably not damage but he doesn't take any damage really in return nothing substantial a little bit of hp damage but yeah the rest of the green skin force is going to be marching forward trying to corral these chaos forces but the chaos player paying playing a very wide spread out style of play just really trying to dry out the game going to heavy skirmishing and yeah he's getting his wish i mean the green skins have forest goblin spider riders which are really good at facing down uh, chaos skirmishers if you're expecting horse masters for horsemen you could just use force goblin spider riders oh and it looks like over here he's going to get a freebie so hounds do charge in now they might be able to break these skulkers but they are actually confident they smoke bomb those hounds which means they're pretty slow and these doggies are actually getting prison shanked really bad you can see they're just the gobos are just going ham so really good play by pippington nice little catch there black works also fanning out to make sure things go well but in the back line things are getting a little chaotic he's going to counter charge with the marauder horsemen but then the, the pig boys Coming in, he can't stay for long, and a lot of those guys actually do get stuck, so some of those hogs are going to come in and lance the shit out of those Marauder Horsemen, which is going to be cool. Black Orcs getting beat up, Plague of Rust going down, uh, which allows the Marauder Horsemen to actually do some real damage, and I think it's not a bad Chaos tactic, because the Greenskins in, in like a front line, unless you bring Chosen with Great Opens, are just going to take you to Pound Town horribly. So yeah, I mean, another way Chaos can play, they can go with like Chosen, like four in the front line, and they can also go with like Chaos Knights and things like that to pressure the flanks, but... Yeah, it's working so far. I mean, pretty even battle. Both players have, you know, taken some light losses, but nothing substantial. Uh, but these Black Orcs are getting a little bit low, and a Warp Chicken could just dance in there. That would actually not be a bad idea, because the Pigs and the other cab units are a little bit occupied right now. So if Warp Chicken wants to come in and get some drumstick dunks right here on the uh, the Black Orcs, I think that could actually be pretty good. Anyways, the Marauder Horsemen are throwing in their Spears, getting some decent value on the Black Orcs. Not a bad situation at all. And he's going to be able to get a bit of a wrap, right? So the infantry are now like starting to form a bit of a formation here where they can collapse in on the archers in the back who are very exposed. But I like that Zero is kind of pulling it apart a little bit. I think it's quite nice. 
Uh, Grimgore, of course, doesn't bring much to the table. He just kind of waddles and gets spears thrown in his face, which is great. Very, very squishy. Has about as much HP as this Goblin Shaman here, which is always fun. Uh, the Black Orcs here, getting plagued again. Very, very low. I think Warp Chicken should go in there and drumstick him. I mean, he's a little bit afraid of the Skulkers, uh, which makes sense, right? He doesn't want to get his Warp Chicken put in that uh, fryer right now, but... Yeah, just run in there and get some slam dunks, man. You got all the tools you need to do that. And uh, the Black Orcs are chasing, but... Yeah, this is a pretty... <laughs> Chaos is, like, reformed on this side of the battlefield. And the Drumstick Lord is getting in there. He gets caught with a Smoke Bomb. And, oh, it's going to be a nice little bombardment from Zero as well. So it's coming down right now. Here it comes. And a 1, and a 2, and a 3. Very, very beautiful play there. So he's essentially killed a group of Black Orcs, right? And the Nasty Skulkers are pretty much offline as well, which is... Uh, with the amount of damage they've taken, it's about 400 gold, give or take. So the missiles from the Greenskins are shooting over here, hitting the Marauder Horsemen and the Horse Masters. So for the first time, Pippington is getting some pretty good value against these Skirmishers. But uh, the Warp Chicken needs to be careful. I mean, if he had Warzog, if he wasn't playing with Grimgore, he could lock down the Warp Chicken and potentially do a ton of damage. But alas, he wanted to meme and pick Grimgore, which, hey, fair play, fair play, guys. So Sarthorial getting in there, he's going to be... Uh, Jumping right in the middle of that, which I think is a little bit risky. But again, what he's going to do is he's going to move in with his infantry, and then he's going to use the piercing bolts. So he's going to drop a huge, huge AOE on himself, most likely, or he's going to try and run. But the uh, the Force Goblin Spider Riders have poisoned him, so he only has 46 speed right now. You you wouldn't think like some foul denizen of the warp could be like poisoned by these guys, but alas, the spiders are quite powerful. So there's going to be a plague of rust going down somewhere. Oh no, a burning bolts! Oh, that's brutal! Oh my god, beautiful play by Zero. So that Burning Bolt right there, he charged in with the Horse Masters. Now, he wasn't expecting to do much damage, but that Burning Bolt's coming in from the Warp Chicken just melted those archers, like did a ton of damage. And and Zero is uh, definitely playing a, has a pretty solid game plan right now. So right here, the Chaos Warriors are charging in and uh, the Broken Tusk Mob as well. And yeah, I think the Broken Tusk Mob isn't going to do anything because these uh, infantry are going to get in and chop them to pieces. They are not good in sustained combat. A Black Orcs have finally gotten a fight. Grimgore is waddling. You can see he's going to be uh, shambling right here, trying his best to get in there. But the Black Orcs, of course, uh, are going to be able to do well against these Chaos Warriors. But yeah, Grimgore finally gets into fight. I don't think he has any kills yet. That's that's why Foot Lords just suck so much wiener. I mean, they're just they're just so bad. I mean, it, it's like it, like even the characters like Sigvald. It's like you always get stuck in like skirmish games like this. Like it's going to be so little effect. So the Wall is going down, which isn't bad. Uh, he does have the Mirror Guard in a 2v1 situation versus Black Orcs as well as the Skulkers, so that's not a bad situation for Pippington. Another Bombardment going down from Warp Chicken. Going to be tagging these uh, these Black uh, these black Orcs and Nasty Skulkers. Does a little bit of work, but Grimgore can chop down some chicken for sure. Yeah, finally Pippington is getting some catches, but again, these Marauder Horsemen are going to basically chase down all these Orc Air Boys. Uh, they're pretty much 100% offline uh, for the most part, but the Black Orcs are finally getting to take out their vengeance. They're going to be chopping up these Chaos Marauders, and uh, the Marauders obviously aren't going to put up much of a fight. But the Chaos has kind of formed a bit of a battle line on this side of the battlefield. But they're going to have to make their stand. Ooh, a nice Smoke Bomb. That could cost them the game. That Smoke Bomb, if, if, if Grimgore is able to get one or two more chops on this uh, Warp Chicken and potentially bring him down very low. There's one. That 500 HP damage. He's still Smoke Bombed for another like four or five seconds. Grimgore might get him. Not kill him, but at least do a lot of damage. So he gets another chop. It looks like that one misses. So Grimgore's melee attack does not go through the melee defense of the uh, big bird right there, but maybe another attack coming in. It would be really nice for the Greenskins if you could get one more, but it looks like Grimgore is unfortunately going to be kind of a stuck here. Plague of Rust maybe going down, or uh, Itchy Nuisance. Looks like it's going to be Itchy Nuisance. Black Orcs are colliding with the Chaos Warriors here, and the Greenskins for the most part, and they have some stuff, but they do get cleaned up pretty heavily in the backfield. Their, uh, their air boys are pretty much all but dead, which definitely is some tough stuff. So Grimgore still fighting. I mean, maybe Grimgore can win some sort of a big fight, but again, there's still some Chaos Warriors with Great Opens here who can chew him down over the course of a long battle. But at least he's fighting now, right? This is like, this is his element. This is where he wants to be, just kind of like cleaving some of these Norskins asunder. Well, I guess they're Chaos Warriors, but technically Norskins. Um, but yeah, there's still some skirmishing coming in from the Warriors of Chaos. There's going to be some Spears coming in, and they are going after Grimgore, it looks like. The Black Orcs here do buckle. They're just so heavily outnumbered. There's not a whole lot they can do there. Some Skulkers. And, um, but I don't know, there's still 56 Black Orcs here. Or anything else? The Mount's power is in the favor of Zero, but again, like, a lot of the power of the uh, Warriors of Chaos here is going to be in their horsemen, right? They've had a ton of skirmishers, but once they do run out of ammo, they're not going to be terribly effective. But I think that Chaos can kind of just drag this on. I mean, Grimgore is such a limp noodle. He really can't do a whole lot here. So he's going to be chopping some Chaos Warriors. Black Orcs are piling in as well, but um, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to be able to do this. They might be able to take some of these guys out. It's going to be hard to say. Rotter Horsemen just cleaning up goblins, which is a great use. I mean, Greenskins are going to have... Terrorish, not terror issues, but uh, leadership issues on some of their lower tier units. So it's very good to chase them down with like skirmishers and things like that. The one black work trying to run away, poor guy. He just wants to go home and have a have a brew there. Right here, the Night Goblin Shaman is surrounded. 
he's going to be going, so that's going to be taking away magic for Pippington, which is going to be huge. Uh, the boars are still alive, kind of, actually, so there's still 34 of these piggies. I mean, they could charge the warp chicken, but the problem is this warp chicken could simply run into his infantry, and that's going to give him, like, pretty much a safe haven. But a nice wall going down from Pippington. It's kind of cool, because it allows you to see where, like, all the greenskins are in the battlefield with the, uh, the little glowing aura. And it looks like the piggies are going to be countercharging Marauder Horsemen, which is going to be nice, but honestly, they'll probably lose. Uh, uh, considering there are poison hounds here as well who are going to really mitigate a lot of their stats. And you can see they're, they're not in the best shape. 27 leadership, 1500 HP. They are getting chewed down, especially by some of these infantry that they're mucked up with here. Uh, Grimgor is still fighting. He's got some black works uh, fighting by his side. He's got about 35 against 27 and 88 Chaos Marauders. Yeah, uh, they're probably going to break just on leadership alone. Uh, they're at two leadership right now. And the Warp Chicken can come in. Now, Black Orcs are immune to psychology, so they can't be terror routed by the Warp Chicken, but still, there's there's a little something-something they can give. So the Warp Chicken's strutting around on his uh, drumsticks there, but the Greenskins look like they're all but broken, and I think Grimgore is going to fall this day. So Grimgore will be falling to the Great Warp Chicken. Well played. Well played. GG, guys. That's going to be it. So Zero is 2-0. He's tied me so far. We both have two wins here in this uh, series, so... going to be good. It's going to be good and tasty. So let's go ahead and update the scoreboard. Well played. Uh, Pippington, if he had had Warzog, I think he could have done fine, and it would have been a much closer game, if not a, you know, potentially a victory for him, but I think that Grimgore just didn't like him. It's pretty tough. Um, so, yeah, let me go ahead and get the next player in here. So, who is next? And, uh, one second here. So, Sarmation is up next. And let me update the scoreboard here. And Pippington is now, uh, it's going to be Starmation. Thanks to all you guys for joining today. Quite a bit of fun. <clears throat> yeah, the Poison Hounds are really feasted. I mean, they, they just went absolutely hog wild, which was, which was pretty bonkers. Jason, thank you for another uh, donation of nine ninety nine. What do you think about Cloistra? I have no idea, man. I got to see her in action. I got to see her in action. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting. I'm really excited. I honestly think they're gonna be great. Um, and for once, I'm actually not once, but I'm, I'm quite excited for the campaign as well. So Sarmatian versus Moose here. Take the crown. So Moose is gonna pick Dark Elf. Sarmatian now can counter pick, and Moose also gets to pick the map. So. Fun stuff. Um, so let's go ahead here and get the, uh, the blocker up. Sorry for starting a little bit later too, by the way, guys. I had to sleep in. wasn't feeling too hot. But voice is holding up. Quite happy about that. And I'm going to go get my charger for the laptop so I can actually chat with you guys. BRB. I return. Oh, got to plug it in over here, it looks like. back. Sorry about the creaking planks in my floor. That Grimgore is so terrible. <laughs> well, it's casual, but we're also trying to win, you know? Yeah, Grimgore is so bad. He can, like, single-handedly lose you games. Uh, so, melee attack and melee defense. So, when you have melee attack, that's, like, your likelihood, likelihood to hit something, and it's a weight against your opponent's melee defense. So, it's kind of like a dice roll, right? Like, there's a percent, there's percentages, and, you know, 
as if you're rolling a dice or something based on the actual stats. Um, yeah. Gonna be good, though. Dark Elves versus Empire, definitely a solid matchup. Empire uh, can dominate the cap game pretty hard. Dark Elves usually... Most Dark Elf players are simply gonna go with, uh, like... Like a Supreme Sorceress with Lore of Death because it only costs like 900 gold and then you can get a super wide army that's really good at pressuring the Empire. So I expect to see that most likely. Um, yeah, pretty excited to see how it works actually. If that's the direction he goes. Um, but yeah, I'm not terribly familiar with the matchup. Something I need to uh, research a little bit more. Yeah, Grimgore needs like 6,000 HP. He needs to be like one of those guys that like if he's one of the only characters left, he's going to be a problem for you, right? He's not just going to be a limp noodle that just is like waddling around doing nothing. I mean, he's he's faster than dwarves. He has like 38 speed. You know, he's not like super slow. Okay, so we need to... Uh... <laughs> you gotta try your best, Sarm. <laughs> yeah kevin thanks for joining glad you're looking forward to the tournaments today's been quite a bit of fun not gonna lie we've had some uh good cockfights i think we've had what like five or six games in total ah the laptop is back now i can chat with you guys on here which is going to be easier i like had to minimize the actual game to see chat for a minute but back online Go ahead and get this going here. And the game is on. We're on the Battle of Vard Camp, a map I actually don't know terribly well. Chuck Nurse doesn't dial the wrong number. You answered the wrong phone. Me One man's way. Thank you for the donation. Really appreciate it. You've been, you've been going hard in the paint today. Much respect, my friend. Oh, man. Uh, I think Dark Elves definitely have a slight edge. They're just such a good faction. Dark Elves have so many tools. I mean, the, the ROR's we got. Simon Benjamin says, a tenor, pounds, not euros. Thank you, man. Thank you, Simon. Really appreciate it. Uh, I think that Beastmen are one of the best factions, actually. I don't think they're underpowered by any stretch of the imagination. I think Beastmen are very, very good. So, Zero has two, uh, two wins. I have two wins as well. Just that. It's kind of like... That's better. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, I think Beastmen are a very good faction. I think they actually have one of the highest win rates in the game. I can't remember where I heard that, but I think they do. Like when I was at a Creative Assembly's office for the last ever Chosen that we had, I think they were saying the Beastmen had really good win rates. I think they're great. They're just very micro-intensive. Beastmen aren't easy for like beginners, in my opinion. I think that Beastmen are pretty, uh, pretty hard to play faction. We got Chuck. All right, guys, the time is now. So for the Dark Elves, front line of Dread Spears, which is pretty good against like Empire Heavy Cav, things like that. We also have Sisters of Slaughter. So they're pretty mean. I mean, they can beat pretty much any Empire Infantry unit. They'll even do well against Greatswords simply because their stats are so bonkers. Um, but again, very susceptible to Powder and Cav charges. So like Reichsguard, Empire Knights, anything charging into Sisters is gonna do a ton of damage. Two groups of Shades to get that really heavy armor piercing. Plus they have the stock mechanic, which means that when they charge in, when the shades are running, they're not going to be taking artillery fire, which is very nice, or any or other fire. Uh, Supreme Sorcerers with Death. In the back, you just have three Coldwind Knights. A very competitive Dark Elf build, for sure. In the back, Dark Riders, Dark Riders, and yeah, good stuff. And for Sarmation, he's got Knights of the Blazing Sun. In the back, two groups of those, which can definitely swiggity sweety all over this front line. However, shades will tear them to pieces. He's got the Silver Bullets. He's got Halberds, uh, State Troops in the front line. A Grey Wizard, so he's got an evil Gandalf over there. And for his leadership, it looks like he does have Volkmar the Grim. And two more Knights of the Blazing Sun. Interesting stuff. I mean, hopefully you can get a free pick here. If he can actually just charge these uh, Dark Riders. But again, I think like it's going to be really tough for the Empire to win this. Because I don't know like how he's going to handle the Sisters. He does have some Powder and Cab and things like that. But I feel like whenever the Empire Cab do charge in, they're going to be taking a bunch of heavy damage from the Shades. And there also is Counterplay from the Cold One Knights. They're going to be incredibly good here against the, uh, the Knights of the Blazing Sun. Knights of the Blazing Sun aren't necessarily like specialists in the Cab vs. Cab game. So... Yeah, Shades with Grey Open is definitely not that great, uh, in my opinion. Uh, Spirit Leech going down on the Grey Wizard, not a big deal. I mean, uh, Volkmar the Grim does have self-healing, so that's why he's going to be doing that, so that makes a ton of sense. 
Over here in the back, the Dark Riders are sweeping around the back. Knights of the Blazing Sun are hot in pursuit. Now, you don't want to be chasing, chasing Dark Riders with Knights unless you know you can like, kind of cut them off. Because again, this is a thousand gold plus chasing about 600. And the whole time, the Dark Elves are just going to be develop, developing that front line, right? Massive Powder Fire going into the Sisters. But the problem is the Shades are now going to open fire on the Silver Bullets and probably cut them to pieces pretty badly. And also, he's not even aware that the Shades are in the battle yet. They're still stalking, actually. Swordsmen uh, charging to their doom, and this is going to be an absolute massacre. So the Sisters of Slaughter charging in, but taking some powder as they do, but the Swordsmen are going to get massacred. So I don't really know how the Empire is going to endure here. They need to get their cab and charge in the front line, like, and they're being screened out by the Spears. I really don't see the Empire winning this. I mean, I hate to call it so early, but here comes a charge, right? But he's getting fit of Unid. Hopefully the Knights are going to counter charge. It's going to be pretty gross, but these Knights need to charge in here and just disrupt. They need to do work because that Empire front line is pretty damn limp, guys. Most of his gold is in the Knights of the Blazing Sun. Another counter charge from Zero coming in with the Coldwind Knights. A, a good charge with the Knights of the Blazing Sun, but I mean, the counter charge is just going to be so good. Volkmar, of course, can buff them. Be pretty good in combat, but look at this. I mean, he's just so tattered. And the Dark Elves just have this inexorable advance. They're just moving forward. It's a very, very solid build here. Um, so yeah, here comes another charge. The Coldwind Knights do charge in, actually into some Halberds. So that could be a saving grace for uh, Sarmation here. But I think that the uh, the Coldwind Knights are you know, going to be a little bit tough. Here come the Silver Bullets. Silver Bullets getting some decent volleys uh, into the Coldwind Knights here. But again, the Sisters are just pouring through. They're very fast. This could be something that's really nice for a Sarmation, though. These Knights of the Blazing Sun could absolutely massacre them. So maybe he can kind of clean up his backline here. Uh, Volkmar the Grim is surrounded, unfortunately, by Spears and a bunch of Coldwind Riders. So, or, or Coldwind Spear Riders, excuse me. And here come the other Knights of the Blazing Sun. So if he can maybe get Volkmar out of there somehow, I mean, he might be in okay shape. But I think, like, the fact that Volkmar is just so trapped here by all these anti-large and armor-piercing tools, it's probably going to spell doom for the Empire. So Balance of Power, you can see, is already shifting in the favor of Zero here. In the back line, though, he does clean up the Sisters of Slaughter. So if he had kept Volkmar safe, I think he would actually be in okay shape right now, right? Like, he's compromised most of the Sisters. They're all really beat up. But Volkmar the Grim needs to get out of there. If he can actually push out, that could potentially get him back in the game. Because he is cleaning up a lot of these very squishy Dark Elf infantry, right? There's a strong pocket here. Volkmar the Grim needs to escape. It looks like he's broken. Spirit Leech going down. And uh, I think that might be it for the Empire. I mean, he's doing very well aside from that. That's that's the thing that's a little bit depressing about this here. Uh, the Knights of the Blazing Sun are charging into the Coldwind Knights in the back. Now, they probably will win because it's like a 2v1 and they have them heavily outnumbered. Silver Bullets have re like reestablished themselves. They're up on the high ground. They're doing really good, just kind of shooting down into the valley here. And the Dark Elves are getting very, very beaten up. But again, Volkmar the Grim, now if he can rally, the Supreme Sorceress should be able to chase him off the battlefield, which is such a good trade for the Dark Elves. Uh, Melkos going down, a full erect charge coming in from the Knights of the Blazing Sun. So a uh, good counterplay here from Sarmation, despite the fact that it was a very rough initial start for him. Yeah, he's doing pretty well with his Knights now. I mean, he's really stabilizing, but I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be a little bit tough because losing your Lord like that is just such a disadvantage. And his Knights of the Blazing Sun are getting a little bit beat up, and there's still some Dark Elf Spears in the back. Volkmar actually died to the Supreme Sorceress, so she was able to actually Spirit Leech him to death, which is which is uh, pretty good stuff here. So the Coldwell Knights do get taken out with the Withering, also going to make the Knights of the Blazing Sun exponentially more effective. Uh, but the Spears are here. The State Troops are kind of broken. Silver Bullets... And definitely get some shots and finish off these uh, Sisters of Slaughter here. But there's too many Dark Elves left, I think, guys. I mean, the Warrior Priest is doing a pretty good job buffing the troops and hunting down the uh, Shades here in the back line. But yeah, losing Volkmar the Grand, there's still Dark Riders to chase the, uh, you know, the, the remnants of the Empire Army. And I think that's going to be it. I think Dark Elves are going to take this one. So yeah, I don't know. The Empire fought hard, but when Volkmar went down like that, I think that cost them the game. Because if Volkmar were still here, he could, he could be making a pretty big difference, right? He could be beating down the Supreme Sorceress if he hadn't been surrounded. There's a lot of different tools that he could have brought to the table for sure. Um, Dark Riders in the back line. Not a lot of actual substance for the Dark Elves. It's mostly just like chaff and spears, but again, it's just the Warrior Priest. And the Dark Elves still have their Lord as well, which is going to be a little bit tough to bring down. So the Lord here is going to be charging. Knights of the Blazing Sun coming in for a fat chubby charge. Going to be riding down these three sisters who have such good leadership. Look at that. They have like three models and they just get lanced into oblivion there and they still, uh, they're still holding firm. But... The Empire's trying to fight their way back. These Halberds are going to be pushing in. Silver Bullets still have a lot of ammo. So it looks like there's going to be a downhill charge here, maybe against these Dread Spears. The Warrior Priest needs to get back here and start buffing his, uh, his Rose. But yeah, you can see Melkos going down. Supreme Sorceress should be able to finish him off with the Spirit Leech. But you can see the Bounce of Power actually creeping back for the Empire a little bit there for a moment. But again, the uh, Warrior Priest... Oh, Grand Soul Fire Bombardment going down. That's going to do a little bit of damage. Not the most. But, uh, but yeah. So far, guys, Halberds are pushing up the hill. We do have the Grey Wizard right here doing his thing. Things are getting a little bit crunk. So the Silver Bullets uh, are online, but again, there's Dread Spears. I think it's pretty much 100% over at this point. Yeah, definitely. Definitely over. 
The Dark Elf Bulb Army buff is very good. It is very good. But I really think the Empire could have won that if they didn't lose Volkmar. That was really the biggest thing. Like, losing Volkmar like that was really, really tough. All right, guys. So that is uh, game three. Oh, why does it do that every time? I think if I escape out of that too quick, it, uh, it kind of trolls me. Okay, let's see. Yeah, Dark Elves are one of the best factions by far. Professional Moose has to leave, he says. Okay, so he says he has to step out, which is fine. We're just doing a casual play today. So um, I can jump jump in or we can put... Um, let me see here. Let me go ahead and see who's next on the list here. Uh, actually, we'll put Sarmatian. Uh, Sarmatian just uh, just has to go as well. So we'll put King and Aerocrastic. So let's do that. Um, yeah, so we're going to get King and Aerocrastic in here. It looks like uh, a bit of lag. Oh, my game actually crashed. Okay. Second here. Well, I wanted to make sure that everyone can get a chance to play based on the time frame. Second here. Let me fix this up. Cool. Got to reboot the game real quick, guys. My apologies. Yeah, Dark Elves are probably one of the best factions. They're very forgiving and very powerful. They do have some micro-intensive builds, but you can also just play builds like that where you have like cabin infantry and you just march forward and it's uh, it's pretty hard to beat, in my opinion. Okay, multiplayer battle. All right, here we go. Trying the game, but it's lagging, unfortunately. Maybe there's not a spectator slot open. Let's see, unspecified error. I can't wait till we get a... Uh... All right, let me make sure and check these guys. Okay, Aerocrastic's gonna remake the game and we'll go from there. Yeah, Empire is an advanced faction. They're hard to play, in my opinion. They're very tough to play. So Zero um, actually had to step away. I guess he had something come up, uh, personal, something personal with his his uh, his peeps over there. So um, he still has three wins though. So if somebody doesn't top the three, then uh, yeah, he'll still be the winner for the day. Mm -hmm. See what the game name is when we can. Yeah, Empire is well balanced for sure. Empire is such an awesome faction. They're one of my favorites, hands down. Well, we're going to be um, getting Aerocrastic and King of the Dead in the next game. And uh, yeah, we'll see what factions they agree on playing. Let's see. Empire is super micro intensive for sure. Garland Green, thank you so much for sponsoring the channel. And a lot of people don't know that. You can actually sponsor the channel just like Twitch. Uh, so thank you so much, Garland. Thank you, thank you. Let's see if he's having problems. Okay, they're getting it all fired up right now. There might be some issues with Steam as well. That could be part of it. We're going to be getting spectator mode soon, I think. Hopefully. That's going to be really nice because then I can just uh, host lobbies and, and do all that. That's going to be really, really good. Thank you so much, man, for the sponsor. All right. Let's, well, we're definitely not in three boys, one cup. That's, I don't believe that's our game. 
I mean, I could just jump in again, but I feel like I want to give these other guys a chance to play. Oh, game's up. Come here. Oh. Let's see if uh, they might have put the wrong password. Okay, we got it. Thanks, man. Appreciate it, Garland. All right, King of the Dead and... Oh, oh, he mangled his name. Elo, 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 Crastic, but... Oh, man, making it all tough to read. All right, so let's update the scoreboard. So Zero currently has three wins. So just for the sake of posterity, we will put that here. So um, I have two. He has three. Um, it might get back around to me. We'll see. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and change that now, though, because it's going to be um, the Aerocrastic and uh, your boy, King of the Dead. I don't even know why we have like both scoreboards. I guess it lets you know who the challenger is. I'll, I'll probably make a specific overlay for uh, for for, uh, for King of the Hill if we if we keep doing the series. Zero, maybe arrow. Yeah, I would have liked to have started earlier today, but I had to, I had to get some rest, boys. Yeah, the Beastman campaign definitely is not that fun. It's pretty outdated compared to a lot of the newer stuff. Oh boy, that's some good. That's some good tea. Yeah, uh, Norska has a really good matchup here, I think. If you just bring Marauder Champions and then Fumir with Great Opens, you can usually beat most Tomb King builds. And then just a couple of Hounds to cause problems. Yeah. Hmm, High Elves versus uh, Tomb Kings, actually. That's going to be a fun one. Oh, I'm a big fan of Norska. My first, uh, my first game on stream today was actually with Norska. Yeah. A lot of fun. Yeah, Skaven are, I think, one of the worst factions, sadly. Skaven really suck, and so do, uh, I think, yeah. they just like, I don't know, they're just not good. Kind of, It's kind of an unfortunate thing. Get the blocker up, sorry about that. Yeah, we gotta get Chuck in his boot. Uh, I think Indie Pride won, what did he win, like 30, 40 bucks last week? Yeah. It's, it's just, it's a little pocket change, but it's kind of fun, right? You're just casual, hang out and do your thing. Well, Tomb Kings versus Elves. Aerocrastic has a very good build. Although there is something that's very, very strange here. Very strange. And if he keeps it, I'm going to be thoroughly surprised. Skaven were very good when they first came out, but then all these other factions started getting their ROR's and their, their buffs, and Skaven just kind of like were left in the darkness to like basically just, just I don't even know what the term is. But they, they're just Skaven aren't good. They're very hard to play too. Like. To be good at Skaven, you have to be able to micro like 30 units at once. It's, uh, yeah, it's hard. I sound exhausted. I hope not. I'm ready, guys. I'm ready to go. I got that energy. Um, I, I, I've, I've actually had a cold the past uh, three or four days, so I'm, I'm on the tail end of it. I'm feeling a lot better. I can at least project my voice now. Like, the past few days, I was like, it's like, hey, Anna can help me. Can't hold any longer. Yeah, it was kind of like Palpatine. But anyways, I'm feeling pretty good now. A little tired, but we're good. We're good, brother. A good high elf build against Skaven. 
Bring a ton of silver helms and infantry and spears and you'll just crush them. Yeah, I suppose uh, Shetland has a good point that Skaven do have a couple really good matchups as well, but I just feel like they're very weak compared to other factions. Top factions, Dark Elves are for sure one of the top factions. Chaos, Vampire Counts. Yeah. Those guys are all really good. Vampires are pretty good in most matchups. Uh, Call, I'll probably do the um, the tabletop tournament. I want to, it was Loremaster of Sotek's idea, so I want to I want to see if maybe he wants to do it with me, or maybe we'll do it on his channel, and I can like co-cast with him or something. Because um, it was his idea, so I, I, it's all his. Aaron is too dangerous to be left alive. Well, we might have been dangerous enough if I had kept going. If I hadn't picked that stupid Iro Titan earlier, I probably would have been able to take that game. But alas, we had to meme, and it failed us. Yeah, Queek. Queek is not a very good lord. Skulk is very good. You can use a Bonebreaker. Um, the, play the Seers aren't bad on their respective uh, mounts. So. Swordmasters versus Skaven? Uh, not bad. I probably even... Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to think about my high elf build versus Skaven. I'd have to think about it. Tried so hard. Got so far. Yeah, so we'll probably go like... Yeah, we'll probably go another like forty. We'll go. We'll go for two hours and fifteen minutes just to give make sure everyone who's in the pool can play. It'll be uh, actually Arista Demos and I coming up again soon. We do have a Discord. Maybe uh, someone here can drop you a link. One of the, the admins. <clears throat> All right. So for the armies of uh, Aerocrastic, he does have uh, a Moon Dragon. What the hell is this thing? I always forget what these are. Yeah, Moon Dragon. So he does have a breath attack, which is strong versus a single unit. Okay, very cool. If you're in terror, got a couple groups of silver helms, which are pretty good here, actually. They have shields against, like, you know, well, it's not going to protect them against Ushapti Grapos and things like that. But they can do decent against, like, skeletons and Nekar warriors and Tomb Guard with their charges. However, they will lose pretty bad to the Necropolis Knights of uh, King of the Dead. So I really like that pick over here quite a lot. On top of that, he does have a front line of the White Lions and Spearmen. So it's kind of an intermixed front line. He does have three of the White Lions and two Spearmen. Two groups of the Lothran Sea Guard, it looks like. So he doesn't have any Sisters of Avalorn, who are pretty good against Constructs. Now, for Constructs, he's really going to be relying on his uh, Pigeon Goon Squad, which he he truly has another uh, Aristodemos. It goes full circle, King of the Hill. So, I mean, but if you don't want to play, it's fine. I can just step in. Um, Great Eagle. I'm going to be stepping in again if it comes back to me. Great Eagles here, Silver Helms, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So for the armies of King of the Dead, he does have Carrion. He has Nekar Horsemen, Necropolis Knights. A Grand Herofant Katep on a Chariot. He does also have a Tomb Prince in Halberds, Nightcar Warriors. Yeah, a couple more Necropolis Knights over here as well. So pretty damn cool army. It looks like he does have an Ecker Attack with each squad as well. Or no, maybe just the bottom squad. So yeah, no predictions really. I mean, the Great Eagles, what are they going to be hunting? I mean, I feel like the Great Eagles have to try and goon the uh, Necker Attack as well as Katep if they really want to have any success here. So yeah, we're going to see how it goes. I really do like the pick of the Necropolis Knights. They're really going to outclass the Silver Helms pretty bad. Because, again, they have really good AP, they have poison, and uh, they have enough mass to kind of block the charges here. But, again, Halberds and Spears mix in the front line, so nothing's going to be free here for Aerocrastic. Definitely a very experimental build, for sure. I was expecting, like, Sisters of Avalorn and things like that. Anyways, the uh, Carrion are swooping around the back. Obviously, they're going to be attacking the uh, Lothar and Seaguard to shut them down. And the Silver Helm's thinking about charging in, but the Sneaky Snake's coming in. A nice little breath attack? No, not so good. It does a little damage to the Nekar Warriors, but it looks like... It was uh, actually a bit of a swing and a miss. So Grand Herald and Katep is not on his DJ booth. He's actually going to be on the Chariot, which is his mobile DJ station. Herion in the back are going to be attacking the Lothar and Sea Guard. You might as well just let the Lothar and Sea Guard defend themselves. Silver Helms probably could deal with the Nagkar Warriors for sure. Or not Warriors, the Horsemen. Yeah, we're going to see. Front line, White Lines are, uh, are going to be charging into the Spearmen and the Warriors here. Spearmen, of course, are going to be replacing the Silver Helms. And hopefully King of the Dead pulls back because he's about to be charging into Spears. And wow, look at that. Aerocrastic braced instantly. That was beautiful. Oh no, and King of the Dead actually gets his Tomb Prince sniped here. So the Tomb Prince overextends and it is just getting that, that Pigeon beat down. So the Pigeons here are just circle beating this uh, Tomb Prince right here, including Alariel, which is pretty scary. So really, really good play here from uh, Aerocrastic. He's able to react immediately and get that really solid snipe. In the back, the Carrion have engaged on these guys, and it looks like this one group of uh, Lothar and Seaguard is going to be taken out, most likely, by, you know, just the sheer numbers back here. Uh, Hakar Horsemen also get crumbled by the Silver Helms and the White Lions on the flanks. And so far, it's looking to be very, very good here for uh, for Aerocrastic. 
He's able to take out the Tomb Prince who's crumbling. He 100% wants to kill that because if he doesn't, it could come back to haunt him for sure. He actually still has his curse too, which could be very strong. Silverhelm still cleaning up the carrion in the back. It looks like the dragon is going to be jumping here on the Necropolis Knights. And this is a pretty scary little goon squad, especially with Hilarial's healing. So even if the Great Eagles and the dragon take a little bit of damage here, they can still do a ton of work. Necropolis Knights do get the Nero's Incantation of Protection right here. And you can see that they're going to be uh, running using that physical resist from the, uh, the Pigeon Hordes, which are on the hunt. And it looks like the Tomb Kings are starting to take over in some respects. But Aerocrastic is certainly ahead on the Bounce of Power here. Grand Herofin caught up. I'm not really sure where he went. He's uh, he's lurking on his uh, DJ booth somewhere. It looks like he's in the back here. But anyways, the sneaky snakes are being just... You would think they would do better here, but the pigeons are just ferocious. Look at these things. But another group of these sneaky snakes is going to be piling in here, which is going to be pretty strong. I mean, they do, they're do they not the anti-large rank with halberds, but again, they still have pretty good damage values. But yeah, the pigeons, I don't know. I think the dragon should come in here as well and maybe get the Star of Avalorn. But y'all know the dragon's coming for that ass. He's going to be landing on that Tomb Prince right there. That will 100% finish him off. And the Tomb Prince gets melted by the Moon Dragon. So very, very good play from Aerocrastic here. Uh, he's also able to take out the Necropolis Knights from King of the Dead with the Double Pigeon Goon Squad. I feel like Aerocrastic is is defining the metagame right now. This is just straight up... I have never would have thought, like, oh yeah, against Tomb Kings, I'm going to bring Double Great Eagle and just and just beat the hell out of their, their elite units. But, man, he's doing a beautiful job with these Eagles. The Shopti Summit is going down right here from King of the Dead, which is going to be pretty good at pinning Alariel in there. Dragon's coming in, and oh no, Grand Herofin Katep has been caught by the Silver Helms, and he's going to take a little bit of damage for sure. He takes about 400 right there. He is weak to fire as well, so it's going to be absolute punishment. The Necrotech does charge in just to block him up and allow Katep to escape. Lariel and her pigeons are just doing a ton of work here, and the Heart of Avalorn going down, which uh, the Star of Avalorn, which does actually hit the Great Eagle as well, so that's going to be doing a ton of healing. I know the birds birds do eat snakes. It's it's not a myth. Uh, Lothran Seaguard in the back are online, easily going to be able to finish off those carrions. So you can see he still has this like firepower coming in here, which uh, 90 armor, I guess, on the Necropolis Knights is pretty good, but I don't think that King of the Dead can come back here. He just doesn't have enough anti-large. He has like too much anti-infantry with the double chariots plus the Necrotect. Like, his only anti-large really were the spears, I guess. And, I, you know, the sneaky snakes aren't bad against large targets, but they're not the halberd variant, which would have been exponentially better here, I think. Um, anyways, the sneaky snakes are being taken out. The Overwatch fire from the Lothrim Sea Guard helping out quite a bit. And also the spearmen are going to be charging in, easily cleaning up shop, and the Tomb Kings just get crumbled right there. So the pigeon meta game, the pigeon meta, who would have thought? Look at this, these freaking eagles. I want to have Aerocrastic send me that game. I want to cast that one separately. Respect the Pigeon Meta game. That's good. I should rename. I should rename the stream to Pigeon Meta. That was great. Oh man, what a game! You're a wizard, Larry. That was crazy, wasn't it? <laughs> the poor snakes, I know. So we're gonna update the scoreboard here, and Aerocrastic is currently on a 1-0 run here. Red score. Aha. Uh -huh. I don't know. I'm afraid to face him now with this pigeon if I have to face him. <laughs> King of the Dead says, damn. GG. All right. So next we have uh, myself. And then it's going to be Aristodemos. Okay, I'm back up, boys. Meet's back on the menu. So we're going to rejoin here. We can get in. So, uh, let me know your pick. That was beautiful, Pigeon Beatdown. He's going to go Tomb Kings. Who do we want to play? Green skins are always fun. Vampire counts, eh. I don't feel like using those guys. You guys you guys want to see Norska again? You guys want to see Norska? You want to see my Norska build versus Tomb Kings? All right, let's see. I love... I, I've been on a Norska kick again lately. I'm just having so much fun with them. Norska. I'll do Bretonia next game if I if I get a choice. You guys don't want to see Norska? Come on. I want to show you guys this build. 
Yeah, see, Anna wants Norska. Anna wants to see Norska, so that's, that's the trump card. All right, so let's go to my build. I might need to change it up a little bit. Um, yeah, this build looks pretty mean, for sure. <laughs> Bring the elephants. Simon Benjamin, a fiver for the pigeon glory. Dude, thank you, man. That was glorious, wasn't it? That was insanity. So yeah, I want to show you guys this build. Next game, I'll play Bretonia. Give you, Give you a meat good old rub. 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 Yeah. Or green skins, maybe. Nice, nice hot, hot. You don't see Norska a lot in tournaments, so I feel like it's kind of fun to like mix them in every now and then. Pretty good. I'll make my hair more Norskin. You guys ready for this? Yeah. There we go. We were like mad scientists now. The lady has spoken. I don't really like playing elf factions too much. Is that mad scientist enough? There we go. I'm like Johnny Bravo now. Okay, here we go. Ready. Ooh, Southern Chaos Wastes. I think I'd like one more. I shall ready up. This build's pretty good. It's pretty similar to what you guys saw earlier, actually, against Vampire Counts. <sighs> Smash them for the hound. Super safe. I need. I also. You also need Red Bull. I don't need a Red Bull. Get out of here with that. Okay, here we go. I don't know how this is gonna work. We're gonna try. We'll meme a little next game. Because, yeah. How much gold did I have left? Sorry, I'm just like, I think I had like 50 gold. Whatever, it doesn't matter. It's in, it's like one melee attack I lost. Okay, so first we got to get rid of Chuck. And this build came directly from my Norska guide. Uh, Arisa Demos, actually, that is pretty much true. But my build with Norsk actually is against undead factions. It's pretty much the same because they play almost the same, right? Uh, but against uh, other factions like Empire, it changes pretty drastically for sure. Oh, 78 gold? Yeah, whatever. It's fine. So we have the champs in the front line who are going to do a little bit of tank and spank. Javelins in the secondary to take out constructs and big targets. And just in case he wants to attack those guys, we have reinforcements here. So we have the um, Marauders who actually just... Uh, well, I guess he's playing Tomb Kings, right? So we don't have to worry too much about that, so... Well, Carrion, actually. Yeah, Carrion could be trolling me. So we'll put these guys to kill the Carrion quickly. Frog and a Firecaster. It's very similar to what you guys saw earlier. And we also have the Mistalkers this time. It's going to be fun. Against undead factions, you typically want to play this way, in my opinion. Oh, my God. Uh, next, if, if I get to next game, I will mean very hard, but I feel like you guys have already gotten your just due with seeing the double great eagle, the great eagle god himself, descending from the skies, Aerocrastic, a true hero. It's okay, guys. You, <coughs> excuse me, oh my god, like Palpatine, I said, Anakin, I can't hold any longer. <coughs> Damn. That went down the wrong pipe. Oh, God damn it. That's so annoying. <clears throat> it's okay. We're getting there, boys. <clears throat> Here we go. Is he ready? Oh, he's ready. Is he ready for the Norska? Oh my God, what is happening? Oh my God. Shopped you great bows for days. All right, we better start this long march, guys. Thankfully, I do have the mist stalkers. Oh God, he's gonna he's gonna take me out here. It's a pretty good counter build. He must have seen what I was gonna bring. Uh, okay, so we just got to march. Having I, I was about to bring a couple hounds too, which uh, so let's get a couple of these uh, shielded infantry out here to kind of uh, screen those guys out. 
we can actually get some light counter skirmishing going on as well on the flanks. But yeah, for the most part, we need to just move forward. He just has a uh, arc in the black and some spears back here. So if we can get back there, that's going to be pretty good. It's basically just like sustaining until we get to the backfield. Yeah, and he's shooting the shields, which is fine. We need to keep our Vermeer high and tight because he doesn't have too many answers for those. I mean, the Ushapti Great Bows are laying some fire in, but for the most part, yeah, it's, it's, it's not bad. Okay, so let's just keep moving up. I have played many builds like this. So we're going to move our spears in, just keep our, our shields kind of like marching on the flanks, just taking most of those shots. And if he's going to try and charge him with Arkin, he might summon some skeletons, actually. So we can actually uh, we can actually throw up on him, which is okay. Uh, Spirit Leech going down on the Femir, which is okay as well. Nothing, uh, nothing terrible. And we need to keep these guys marching. Oh, oh, we're going to come in with the steel chair. No, no, we, we threw up on him, but it didn't do a whole lot. So let's keep our, our forces going. As long as we can get to this main fight without losing too much. Um, so how fast are Femir? 45 speed against 54. Okay, that's not bad. We could actually chase with the Femir. I'm not, like, terribly opposed to that. Let's chase here. Let's chase here. And these Marauders can go here, and these guys can go here as well. I mean, yeah, should be fine. So these guys and these guys can be in group 3, and these guys can be in group 4, and we're just going to hunt. Frog and company are going to move up. Nice little disruption there. Definitely going to be able to kill these guys pretty quick, though. So we got some Javelins on him. And yeah, the Femir actually have kind of caught these guys, so we're going to get some good damage on them, which I'm quite happy about. Uh, so let's go ahead and keep the Femir, uh, pull them back a little bit, keep these guys, you know, doing their screen, and let's go ahead and keep moving forward. We can just leave, like, one champion here to kind of deal with those guys. I'm really happy, though, we caught these Ushapti Great Bows on the far side. That's That that could potentially, like, keep us in the game here. Uh, he's charging in with some of these, which is fine. We can charge here. And go ahead, and let's move the Javelins up. You guys go in here, you guys go in here, and let's go ahead and pull you guys back. Okay, so he does break off some of our Femir, which is good. Let's go ahead and move the skeletons up. He still has 86 skeletons, so let's go ahead and get that grind, like, start starting to go. And the javelins can uh, just go ahead and start throwing at, you know, one of the Necrotechs or whatever. That should be fine. We'll get you guys going here, and Frog and the Goon, goon Squad uh, can go ahead and start chasing over there as well. I think we want to get up and around the flank, see if we can do a little bit of collapsing. Oh, that's fine. No, Car Horseman can fight champs all day. Yeah. We got Spears and just Chaff basically fighting here, which is fine. Now let's get you guys going here. You guys can go here. And we can get you going there as well. So Flaming Sword of Ruin can definitely go down here. That's going to be pretty good for us. And these uh, Femir need to waddle around the far sides. And let's get you guys going here. And get you guys chasing those Ushapti Great Bows again. Now, if Throg can get a little damage here, that would be quite good and tasty. So we clean those guys up, get the Javelins back, get you guys kind of uh, doing a little bit of light counter skirmishing if we can. And Femir might be able to catch them, actually. Yeah, they're on the hunt. Ushapti Gapos, if we can just endure, they're going to run out of ammo, for sure. Javelins, get the spears over here. Hey, we're getting some decent shots here. And I think we actually laid a bit of a whooping on Ark in there, which is going to be really solid. Uh, Burning Skull needs to go down this formation right now, which is going to do quite a bit of damage. And the Javelins here can uh, do some light skirmishing, I guess. Yeah, but these Femir need to just keep hunting. Ooh, we actually have some shots on Arkin here. Let's get Throg out there as well. He might go for it. He might go for it. That Burning Skull should have done some damage, for sure. Uh, he does get onto our Javelins here. Let's pull back with our Spears, if we can. And the Femir is still chasing. Yeah, we actually get Arkin off. Oh, that's really nice. Let's go ahead and peel out here. And it looks like there's going to be a summon going down in this uh, particular area. Over there, we've kind of lost our uh, formation, so let's go ahead and pull the spears back. I think we have some guys, like, chasing over in the Shadow Realm. Yeah, we're just still doing their thing. The Ushapti are getting hunted, though, for sure. Javelins, uh, you guys need to just pile in as well. You guys need to come over here, I think. So if we can just kind of weather this Ushapti summon, I think we'll be okay. Let's drop the Flaming Sword here. Okay, we get a little catch here, which is nice. So we should be able to catch and kill those guys. Javelins, unfortunately, kind of got compromised. There's, we don't have too many ways of like protecting that many units. Yeah, this is nice, though. I mean, Throg and company are doing a lot of work over here. We do have another Burning Skull, so I think we got to see where the Tomb Kings actually have some troops. 
That's this isn't like the best situation. And the Summon Shopti are almost gone too. Yeah, this is really nice. So Cascading Fire Cloak will drop on Throg. Keep these guys fighting. Our infantry definitely have a pretty big advantage. Let's move these guys past, see if we can do anything here. And let's go ahead and do this as well. And get you kind of moving that way. Okay, so we crumble a lot of those guys. Unfortunately, we do lose some of our uh, our, our heavy hitters here. So Burning Skull does some work. We're pulling in. We have our uh, Ice Arm Rotter still fighting. And we need to get you kind of up piling in there to take out that caster. That guy's. And Throg and company are doing their thing. Those who shopped here are crumbling. Now we just need to waddle Throg back to the main battle. And have him like hold with his force. Uh, our caster is still okay. So we can drop Flaming Sword here, which is going to be so good. That's going to buff up all these champs who are just so angry right now. Uh, just force path back. These Ushapti have been taken out by the uh, Marauder Champions. Yeah, they're, they're going to go down. That's really good. I mean, he's, he's, he's keeping Throg from getting back to the main fight, which is a really good play for sure. And uh, the Necrotex? Oh, that's actually a Tomb Prince. Okay. So let's, let's be a little bit more careful here. Wait till we can get Throg back. These Marauder Champs can go ahead and chase uh, chase those who shopped you down. Actually, let's pull them back here. Frog's getting popped a little bit, but it's not the end of the world. Like, our Champs are doing a really good job here. Plus, these Summon who shopped you are gone. So I'm thinking that's going to be pretty good. What's over here? These are Hunters with Javelins. Arkin is so low. I wish I had some sort of uh, Witchcraft to kind of... Uh... How, are you, how are you doing, buddy? Why are you wavering? You're, you're in good health. Shopped you Grapos are shooting Champs, which is fine. Quite happy about that. Wasting their ammunition. As long as it's not on Throg, I'm, I'm good. I'm good with it. We need to keep our caster alive, though. He's he's going to be pretty powerful here. Great. So, Arkin's low. Probably running a little bit low on Winds of Magic. And these 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 uh, dudes over here are doing great. So, let's actually pull here. We can leave him fighting these. And it looks like a Spirit Leech, which is... It's okay. Get you going right here. See if we can kind of hunt. He's going to keep uh, keep fighting the good fight here. These uh, Ice Arm Rotters are really holding well. Ooh, we get a nice club there. Let's go ahead and pop Fight or Die to keep those guys going. That's going to make them pretty strong. And we can uh, pull these guys over here as well. Keep you fighting. Ice Arm Rotters are just beast moding it. Those guys are doing great. We still have all these Ushapti to deal with though, which is going to be tough. Uh, crumble those guys potentially. Cascading Fire Cloak going on Throg to make him even stronger. Pile into the Skeleton Warriors here. Uh, maybe we just kill this Tomb Prince. Yeah, I think we just kill the Tomb Prince. Hopefully our champions keep fighting here. They're confident and steady. And Arkin does have summon units on the bat uh, battlefield, so that's going to be a decent situation for us. Unfortunately, he does get our caster. Isn't the best situation. Okay, we get some guys coming back here. Have them go chase here. The Tomb Prince, we need to make sure to focus down if we can. Arkin is so low. We need to get this uh, Tomb Prince here. We might be able to goon Arkin real quick, actually, if he's not paying attention. He probably is, though. The Ice Arm Rotters doing pretty good. Uh, let's go over here and help out against our, with our champions. I think that's like a more a better pocket to invest in. Bounce power is pretty even. Rock can definitely lay a weapon on these guys. He's going to clean up the Marauders, which is a good play. But Throg can potentially keep these guys fighting for quite some time. Yeah, they're critical binding. We're going to fight or die again pretty soon, too. Yeah, those who shopped you are going down. He still has a whole other group, though. Arkin the Black is so low. Unfortunately, we don't have fight or die right now. There, a couple of our guys might break. Hmm. Yeah, that, that's a little tough. I don't know if we're going to be able to rally them, guys. I mean, we'll pop fight or die. Well played, though, to uh, Arrow here. Yeah, the, like that build is very unorthodox for sure. I was expecting maybe some more constructs and things like that. All right, so we're going to club those guys. Those who shopped you are done for. I don't know if we're going to get... If we can get some of these champs to rally back in, maybe. Let's actually fight the appropriate target. If Throg breaks, though, it's actually just over. Well played. Yeah. Throg Daddy tried. That was a great one. Let me save that. Uh, uh, Throg. Yeah, that was that was a good Tomb King build. It was very, like, Kaidi and stuff. Yeah, I was not expecting that.
So um, Arrow has two now. We're going till 2.15, so we have another 15 minutes, so. Oh, I forgot to change the scoreboard. Sorry about that. That's fine. Um, so next up is uh, uh, Ristodemos, who I played in the first game. Oh. Sorry about that guy. Gross. GG. So what we could have done to remedy that is maybe like get some more hounds and stuff like that to help chase down the skirmishers. But aside from that, or we shopped you great bows. That's, that's pretty mean. That's pretty mean. That was good. Okay, so let me see if... Uh, second here. Uh, so... Let's see. Just... Uh, The Norse skin hair didn't help yet, did it? Yeah, for sure. All right, we're going to rejoin as a spectator. We got 15 minutes left. Technically, we're at the two hour point, so we would have ended here. But uh, I want to give the boys uh, a chance to uh, get a couple more games in. That was super fun. That was a really good game. Down to the wire, for sure. Ugh. Some chariots. I don't know how well chariots would have done. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll I'll figure it out. Maybe don't worry about who wins. It's more of a casual just playing playing around today, trying out builds and stuff. Yeah. So Aristodemos is who I played in the first game. And I was able to win with Norska. And now he's back. Because it's kind of like in a big rotating circle. Chariots are really good, just uh, not in the Tomb King matchup. Um, okay, so we got Aerocrastic versus uh yeah i'll put i'll post a link to discord uh right now oh he's playing skaven that's a bold move uh that's actually his favorite faction is uh skaven um one second guys Here we go. Okay, go into the stream. Gavin, that's a bold move. Uh, uh, Gobble King actually had to go. He usually can only play early in the day. He has stuff coming up later. So since I started late, he wasn't able to actually stay the whole time. All right, there you guys go. There's a link to the Discord where we hang out and get games. It's really good for like Blood Bowl and stuff, actually. Wow, Vampires is a hard counter, so. I mean, but that's how King of the Hill is supposed to be played. Um, yeah, we got, to, we got to hone our Norse kid today a little bit. Definitely learned a little bit about how I could fine-tune that Norskin build. It was pretty good, but it definitely had some weaknesses. Um, yeah, definitely don't want to go with the Iro Titan, though. Hey, I'm glad you guys like it. As a, as a balding man, you notice good hair. Oh, man. Uh, donation from uh, TMAT64. Kill all the dead things. Well... If Aerocrastic can win this, he truly deserves to be the champion of the day. Because this is a very hard matchup for Skaven. Give and Aristodemos is quite a good vampire well player, so we're going uh, to see how it goes. What's going on here? Why am I... Okay, Aerocrastic has two wins. So let me go ahead and do this. So if, he, if Aerocrastic loses this, he ties me. If he wins, he ties zero, and that'll probably just be a tie and we'll figure it out. It's fine. But again, today's just very casual. So Misha says, Turin is growing his hair out swiftly in order to donate to Italian Spartacus for Christmas so he can keep his head warm in the cold winter nights. Perhaps there's a, a grain of truth in that statement. Yeah, that's pretty funny. 
I don't know why there's two Ainsleys. It's it's really oh, I know why there's two Ainsleys because he's in a. I have like two two feeds, like ones for magic and ones for this, and he's feed. It's playing through my magic stream setup too. Okay, now I get it. Okay, that's really annoying. Okay, so let me go ahead and fix that. No, but if I click that, it's gonna click off this. Okay, I'll just fix Ainsley for the next stream. Sorry about that, guys. I am most excited for Count Noctilus. Because his name is Nicholas von Karstein, I think is his actual name, so he's my dude. <clears throat> he is my homie. Oh man. Been a long adventure today, guys. We're almost at the, the road's end. This will probably be the last one, so if Aerocrastic uh, wins this, then he is going to be tied for first place. And uh, if he loses, then he'll be uh, he'll be uh, tied with me. And that'll be it. It'll be fun. Hopefully, at least it's a lot of games you guys get to see. More than anything, it's like about seeing the games, I think. Today was more of a casual format. We didn't really care so much about like a grand tournament structure, but... Um, yeah, hopefully you guys had fun. Big thanks to all of you guys for joining. It's been a lot of fun. At least for me. At least for me, my dudes. Oh, my, my actual name is Nicholas, yeah. But Nick. So, showtime. It is showtime, my dudes. We're here with the final game of the day. And yeah, I mean, 631 people here. Make sure to hit that like button. Definitely helps out quite a bit. I mean, it takes a couple seconds of your time and uh, makes a big difference to me. Yeah, go for it if you guys don't mind. All right, so for the forces of the Skaven, we do have Treach Craven Tail, which is going to be interesting. I feel like Scroll could be a little bit better against Vampires because he does, of course, have the, the Libra Rubonicus against Mortis Engines, things like that. And, well, you're not going to see those. Treach is hard to kill. He does have Anti-Large as well. So he's going to last quite quite a long time. On top of that, he does have a Grace or a Plague Priest, so he does have the Plague Furnace, so he does have some Mortis Engine play. He does also have a Warlock, and the Warlock he's going to be going with the armor, the Warp Stone armor. So he actually has uh, layers of Mortis Engine effects. So he has the uh, the Warlock Engineer as well as the Plague Priest. So those are going to be like double Mortis Engine, which is very very nice. Front lines, Gaven Slaves. He does have Death Glow Bombardiers. These guys can do a ton of damage actually. So um, yeah, they can melt Grave Guard. They can do pretty well against big targets as well. Uh, definitely a solid pick. He's got Gutter Runners, uh, Poison Wind Globadiers, the anti-large variant against Cav and Terror Guys, things like that. War Plating, War Plating Cannon, Storm Vermin, pretty much it. I think he has uh, two groups of Rat Ogres and some and, uh, some Land Rats and Slaves and stuff for the rest of his army. Very cool stuff. For the forces of Ristodamos, he does have a Master Necromancer, so truly the Palpatine Lord, if there ever was one. Kind of looks like him, too. Uh, Invocation, Raise Dead, as well as the uh, Gaze of Nagash. And the entire front line of Graveguard going super wide with infantry against Gaven usually pays off because they're not very good against them. Black Coach, uh, Deathcaster, and the Deathcaster only has Doom and Darkness, which I really like quite a bit. And it is a vampire, which means they're pretty powerful in melee, and they have Immortal Will, so they're almost they're just so hard to kill. I feel like more vampire players should incorporate the vampire casters as like secondary lords and heroes and stuff. Uh, he does have Black Knights, Black Knights, and that's pretty much it. So quite eager to see how the Skaven are going to deal with this. And uh, here they come. So the Skaven forces are going to be marching forward a little bit, it looks like. He does have the Warp Lightning Cannon. There's not too many good targets. Black Knights are okay, but they're only 700. Oh, these are actually the Lances, so they actually cost about 1,000 gold, I think, or like 900. Can't quite remember. Anyways, the Skaven, the most haggard of Undead Lords, is quite an accurate assessment. First Warp Lightning Cannon shots are going to be just reaming in here, and it looks like it's going to be hitting these Skeleton Warriors. They were obviously just on auto fire, so they're just shooting at whatever's closest at this point. Like, there's some smack talk going on. No, just saying, good luck, have fun. So the Vampire Count's forces are going to be moving forward. The Mighty Black Coach is going to be in tow. Of course, can cause some serious disruption here amongst the Skaven ranks. They do have uh, Rat Ogres. Rat Ogres are a pretty good counter against the Black Coach, and the Globadiers can melt it almost instantly. But uh, Aerocrastic, obviously, is going to be putting his War Platinum Cannons onto the Black Coach, which I think is a very good choice. And oh my god, that did so much damage. Look at that. Three direct hits. That Black Coach is now going to be running with its tail between its legs. Uh, probably going to see an Invocation of the Heck from the Master Necromancer on the Black Coach to try and top it off. But man, talk about a value train. That was that was really, really fast for sure. So 
We're planning cannons, still blasting in there, hiding amongst the trees, and you can now see that Palpatine or Air or Ursidamos is going to be manually controlling the black coach and kind of swerving it in circles and everything and kind of memeing about with it. So, yeah, pretty good stuff here. I mean, if Aerocrastic can somehow magically pull this victory out, I'm going to be very, very impressed. Warp Lightning Cannons have switched. They're now going to be shooting at Black Knights. They instantly take out five Black Knights with a single lance. And uh, the front line is about to engage. Grave Guard, Sternsmen, I would imagine, are in here somewhere. Skeletons, Conic Shine Stalkers. Nope. How would you not bring the Sternsmen here? That seems a little bit odd. But the Globadier is going to be dropping some hot bombs. Ooh, those Grave Guard get melted. That was really solid. And now the Clan Rats or Skaven Slaves are going to rush forward. So very, very Skaven play here from Aerocrastic, a true hero of the people. And the Globadier is just melting those Grave Guard. Great stuff. Uh, Skaven Slaves are going to muck them up, and this is quite nice. He can get a couple more volleys, and Skaven Slaves will route pretty quick, but they'll hold for a minute or two, which is nice. So, in the meantime, though, oh, there was actually two more Blood Knights and Barracks Reavers here on the far side. So, a massive force coming from the flanks. All the Cav coming in. The Black Coach is actually going to be sweeping in right towards the middle. And can the Skaven endure this Cav? Also looks like in the back, the Feasters in the Dusk are being kept in reserve. Probably going to go after that Warp Lightning Cannon. So the first charge is underway. The Skaven Slaves of Spears are going to be taking the charge. They don't have charge defense, so they actually take a little bit of damage, but nonetheless, Radagris can countercharge them pretty efficiently. The Plague Furnace for the Skaven is going to be melting the Conic Shine Shockers. And the Grave Guard are pouring through, but they're getting melted really hard by these Deathclaw Bombardiers. Master Necromancer is up over here as well with some Skeleton Warriors, and it looks like the Death Vampire is over on the flanks as well. And what is... Oh, it actually is a snare net from the Gutter Runners, which is doing that. But anyways, the Vampire Cav need to get in there and be a little bit more efficient. Uh, it feels like they're kind of just haven't gotten into that cookie jar yet, and they really need to be more aggressive. Uh, Blood Knights do catch Rat Ogres, which is a really, really nice catch. But again, uh, Aerocrastic is in proper position with his uh, Poison Wind Globadiers, and he's able to get some beautiful Overwatch fire on those uh, Blood Knights. And honestly, if the Blood Knights go down, I mean, I think that's going to be game. I don't think that the blood, uh, the Cav of the Vampire Counts is doing enough work, and the front line is also melting, right? Like, these Grave Guard are dead, these one are dead. Aerocrastic doing a very, very good uh, showcase of how to play Skaven right now. So take notes if you guys are interested in playing Skaven. Uh, Blood Knights are going to be charging through. They definitely have to at this point. There are some Storm Vermin with Halberds, which are going to be able to do work. They're snared again by those Gutter Runners. They're taking Globadier fire from all directions. Now, the Feasters in the Dusk do get in here. They snuck in the back. These little angry Golems are going to be able to club these guys. And, uh, yeah, wow. Nice catch here from Aristodemos. But, again, I don't know if it's enough to get him back in the game. It is going to fully shut down the Warp Lightning Cannon. Though. This thing is offline for the rest of the game. Now, Vampire Counts, I don't think they can really contend the Mortis Engine game because there is this Plague Priest here. But a massive group of uh, Blood Knights and everyone does get slapped with an Invocation of Nehek. And you can see when that Invocation goes off, it actually shuts the Bounce of Power down uh, for the Skaven. So it goes back towards the Vampire Counts. Because the Feasters in the Dusk, they just got a massive pickup. That was beautiful. The Storm Vermin got forced forward by the Cav. But these guys need to go and start attacking these Globadiers right now. Or maybe go after the Deathwind Globadiers or Death Globe. I'm not sure where they're going to go, but they need to get in there and do something. Anyways, uh, the Cav of the Vampire Counts is kind of stabilized. Skaven have fallen behind on the Bounce of Power, which is a little bit tough. The Vampire does have the Immortal Will. Tretch doing a good job, but that Immortal Will is so powerful. Going to be able to heal up. Hit with that. So, really good play by both players. This is by far the hardest matchup for the Skaven, and I think that Aerocrastic, had he been able to protect that Warp Lightning Cannon, might have still been in okay shape. But now he's starting to slip a little bit. He doesn't have that Overwatch Fire. His backline's a little bit more compromised, and his Skaven Infantry are running on fumes to an extent. The Black Coach somehow healed up to full health. Going to provide really good armor piercing against Storm Vermin and some of these Halberds here, so that's quite nice. Globators have done a ton of work. I mean, they are melting these Varric Reapers right now, for sure, but I don't think they can do enough against all the re remnants of the Vampire Counts. The, uh, the Black Knights get a great charge. Those Globators are pretty much offline. They're done for. Skaven have some Halberds here. Over here, I guess they have a Plague Furnace, maybe? I mean, the Blood Knights, how are the Blood Knights doing? That's the really important question. So there are 33 Blood Knights. Now, if he can cycle charge and break the Clan Rat Shield, I mean, he, the Blood Knights can easily kill that Plague Priest there, for sure. But the Master Necromancer isn't like a combatant, right? He's more of a, like a support lord, so that invocation did change the game, but I think the real MVPs were the uh, Feasters and the Ducks with the, uh, the little Palpatines back here doing a great job. As far as the Vampire Counts go, over here in the back, there's the Vampire Floor of Death. I would definitely bring that back for the main battle. It's going to be a little bit more useful. And the Black Coach, still memeing about. Yeah, the Vampires pulled it back. They were able to get the Feasters in the Dusk and really just get swiggity swooty in this back line here for sure. And it looks like even the Storm Vermin are getting worn down by the Blood Knights as well as the uh, the Skeletons and the Conic Shine Stalker. So if these 81 Storm Vermin break, it's going to be really tough for Skaven to win. They're at 9 leadership right now. But, you know, uh, Aristodemos is taking losses on his Blood Knights. There is that to kind of take into account here. So uh, the Plague Priest is going to be falling back from some of these troops right here. It looks like the Zombies. And Tretch is still in okay shape, but Tretch 
I mean, I guess he's really good against Cav, right? And the Grave Guard are all but dead. But yeah, there's just too much. Uh, you can see the Golems are coming in. There's still 72, 72 of these guys, which are going to apply poison. They have pretty good combat stats. I really don't think this Gaven can win this one. Uh, although, Mortis Engine coming in from the Warlock Engineer here is actually melting the uh, Skeleton Warriors. But I don't know. Can Tretch is beat up as well? There's still a full health vampire running around as well. Black Knights are just chasing down the scraps. Now, this is pretty good, though. Having the Feasters in the Dusk work on the Warlock Engineer, he's pretty squishy. He only has 45 armor, and these guys do hit extremely hard, but looks like he's actually going to be chasing the summons. Kind of strange. Uh, anyways, the Blood Knights do get a full surround for the most part on the Plague Priest. They're not a full surround, but a decent little engagement. And, uh, and yeah, I think that the uh, Plague Priest is going to go down to these Blood Knights. He doesn't have enough stopping power. Maybe Tretch can come in and save him. If, if there was some sort of a rat summon, if he could get like a Vermintide on top of these Blood Knights, I think they might be able to kind of stabilize this position. And there's a Warlock Engineer coming in. That's pretty nice, but yeah, look at this thing. This thing is going down quick. Blood Knights hit incredibly hard, uh, but they're getting low. There's only 24 models. Did the Skaven actually force them back? Is there, is, is there a way they could really come back here? I don't think so. I think there's just too much over here. So Arista Deimos making a little bit of a mistake uh, chasing away with the Feasters in the Dusk here. <clears throat> Those bad boys should definitely come back over here. See what they can do. Help out a little bit. Uh, Black Knights have 41 models. They can charge in there as well. And the Vampire Meme Lord is, is trying to scurry away. You can see Palpatine is scurrying with his uh, big... He has a huge cloak. Look at that thing. That That is a power cloak if I've ever seen one. So he's running from the rats. Rats are coming with the prison shanks. They're, they're straight up hoping he drops the soap. Maybe he will. Uh, Black Knight Charge coming in. Doing some serious work to the clan rats. Plague Furnace, of course, is uh, going to be, you know, a perpetual threat. But again, there's still a Black Coach here. Black Coach can actually do good damage against the Plague Priest. It has a really good AP. Relatively low melee attack, of course. Uh, Halberds over here are fighting the Cav of the Vampire Counts. Doing a pretty good job, considering they chipped down a couple of the uh, Black Knights. The Blood Knight's still at 24 models since last we looked. But honestly, I think Skaven are going to get hit with army losses here. It's looking like. Um, there's just too many healthy Vampire Counts units, right? There's these Black Knights, there's the Black Coach. The Black Coach is going to cause terror as well, which potentially could be good against like the Chaff units and things like that. The Plague Priest has about 1,000 HP left. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be tough to say, guys. I, I don't know. Is it raining? Oh, it is raining. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, isn't that neat? Yeah, the, there were so many Cav units. Arisid Amos was... He had a really rough start. I think that Aerocrastic outplayed him pretty heavily early, but he's able to stay resilient and, uh, you know, eventually get into the cookie jar. Those that go those golems in the back of the map were solid. Shutting down that Warp Lightning Cannon was really good because otherwise, Tretch could have sat on the Warp Lightning and just blasted the cab all day. So, wow. That was good. Well played. So, um, let's go ahead and update the scoreboard. So, Rissed Amos gets one as well. Nope, no, we don't want to do that. Cancel. So, the standings of the day. That's going to be it for now, guys. My, my voice is starting to give out. I'm still getting over a cold, so. Oh, uh, well played. Well played. And we shall have peace. Once more, the vamps shall rule the galaxy. Why is Palpatine sad? Yeah, I would do more, but again, my... Uh, my voice is a little bit a little bit worn out. I gotta go get some rest and take it easy for a while. So, uh, as far as the overall standing, zero was three wins. Aerocrastic was two, I was two, and then um we had a, 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 a I'm sorry, I'm so out of it. Aristid Amos also had a win as well. So definitely some good games, back and forth stuff. It was a lot of fun. Uh let me give a special shout out to uh to uh team out sixty four. Simon Benjamin, Garland Green, One Man's Way, Jason Denny. Then also we had a couple on uh, on the PayPal from Connor and Espen. So thank you guys so much. It means a lot. Hopefully you guys had fun. I had a, I had a good old time. It's always kind of fun playing in these events. Jake Murray, I'm glad you enjoyed the channel. Got you hooked on Total War again. Uh, maybe, yeah, we could do Siege Battle someday if they ever kind of amp them up. I'm not a huge fan, but I think in Three Kingdoms they should be. Those Globideers tossed some spicy Pokeballs around for sure. That was... I think that Aerocrastic... I think that Aerocrastic deserves, like, the People's Champion for the... He brought Skaven and did well, and he also brought Double Pigeon Beatdown and was able to just dump on the Tomb Kings with that. That was crazy. So, um, yeah, let's hear it. Big thanks to all the competitors. Um, it is a pretty fun format, for sure. Kind of just jumping around, getting people playing. King of the Hill, as always. And when I'm feeling better, when I don't have a cold, I'll, I'll go up to three hours so we can get more games in and stuff. I think that would be quite a bit of fun. 
Um, I also think maybe it'd be better for like four people just so you can actually develop more of like a narrative. I don't know. We had a lot today, so not everyone got to play as much. Yeah, we'll do some 2v2 tournaments again. I'm going to do another one, but make sure that everyone who's playing has a good internet connection. So stay tuned for the 2v2 tournament as well. Hey, no worries, Mr. Erlinson. There will be more. Um, yeah, the pigeons were great. Like, Aerocrastic, and even against my Norskin build, that Norskin build usually dumps all over the Tomb Kings. But he was able to just have this like skirmishing, kiting, like four Ushapti Grapos. It was, uh, it was wild. It was really wild. Beautiful play for sure. So again, uh, big thanks to you guys for joining. I had a great time. We'll uh, see you guys next weekend. We'll be streaming next weekend, of course. You guys got some, uh, some fun stuff coming up this week. Just uh, stay tuned. Keep an eye on things. Fun announcements for sure. So have an excellent night, guys. And, uh, and we, will, uh, we will see you guys next week. Take care.